What's going on, Facebook? Hello, everyone. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, and thank you for tuning in on episode 73. We have Logan Manning tonight, um, but we'll get into a little bit of what he does and how he can uh, tell us about the topic that we're doing. It's, that's, it's pretty much based around what you do and Absolutely. kind of how we can help each other in our, in our lives. And, and help yourself. Yeah. And help yourself. I'm <laughs> yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, the topic tonight is uh, technically uh, help yourself, but with the entrepreneurial um, mindset, mentality. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to get to sharing as, as Jake gets started here, and we encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, share to any groups, anyone that you think that would uh, benefit or enjoy this podcast uh, now or any other week. And we've got a couple, we have two bottles tonight. Yes. Which I'm excited uh, to do here. Yeah, Steve was gracious enough to go get a couple bottles, and we're actually going to be doing um, kind of a comparison between the two. It's George Dickel, um, number 8 and number 12, and we'll get into the actual numbers on the bottles itself, and here's a hint, it has nothing to do with the age, so that's kind of a, a flyby there for you. But, so... Um, like Steve said, please share, please like. That's how we grow this thing. We really appreciate the support lately. And yeah, we're getting, we'll get started with episode 73 Help Yourself Entrepreneur Mentality. And thank you. All right, ready? <laughs> yep. All right, you can kick her off. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. I'm Jake Sanders, along with Steve Crane, and we make up the Bourbon and BS Podcast. Episode 73, we are accompanied tonight by a great man, Logan Manning, and we will be talking about help yourself and the entrepreneur mentality. Got it. Yeah, so, okay. and Steve's going to go into a little bit on why we picked that topic and uh, what we're smoking tonight. So, but before that, we are having a special... Um, comparison tonight, uh, thank you to Steve. He got the George Dickel number eight and a George Dickel number 12. And before we get started, that has nothing to do with the age statement. It is just uh, the number, and we'll get into that later once we start talking about the whiskey. But um, Steve wanted to get Logan on here, and I'm glad he did. So, Yeah, I mean, the big reason, I've known Logan for how many years now, you think? Like five, four? Yeah, five. And, and it's uh, actually going on six now. Six so years. So basically since I really started working at, at Tinderbox, I've been there for six and a half years. So I was working um, in Easton at the that's time. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Now I'm interested to hear about that transition, but um, it, it's something that like he and I kind of hit it off just, just talking about life, talking about, I mean, what every relationship, cigars. business, cigars, yeah. everything. Yeah, exactly. So um, he has since in the last six years, basically, he has gone off into his own businesses. Correct. And so currently, he uh, Logan has three different businesses, and we can get into this uh, shortly after we talk about some of the whiskey and stuff, but uh, Lotus Landscaping Solutions, Earth Advocate, and Manning Enterprises. Damn. So far. That's it. So far, that's Manning, it. Manning Enterprises it. will pretty much be the... Uh, that's the... That'll be the catalyst for bringing everything. So that'll be like the, the asset company, basically, the, the main, and then everything else is operating. Absolutely. I'm not going to give away your secrets, but uh, <laughs> actually, when you get into that, that might be something that you can share of, of strategizing, how you learn about all that stuff. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to hear more about it because honestly, I feel like with you, Manny, I've known you for a while, and uh, it is something that we, we had talked about hanging out and getting drinks and, you know, yeah. going to work out, you know. You played uh, rugby for a long time. I don't know if I you're, still, still you're still doing it. Absolutely. I was doing the Gaelic football, the Irish football thing. Oh, yeah. And so we hit it off on that stuff too. So um, this is like our first time to actually hang out for several hours, not around Easton. Yeah. yeah. That I recall. That's, that's been, I've been looking forward to it for yeah. years now. So. Excellent. Excellent. So <laughs> welcome and thank you for coming on. It's, it's fantastic thank to you have you on here. It's freaking hot, Steve. It is. It turns I, out it's I, summer. <laughs> I know, but the fact that we had winter for almost eight months and that it's been... 60 degrees to 70 degrees all of May and June. We had a real kind of spring. A, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a shocker. But guess what? We're back down to 60 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> okay. At like 6 a.m. it's 60 degrees. 60 <laughs> some degrees. I Tomorrow's high like, is still like high 80s. I was asking oh, really? Like all, yeah, all week. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't get too excited. <laughs> yeah. It, so in the Midwest, for those of you that aren't in the Midwest of, of, of the U.S., 
We actually, in the first time in my recollection, based on calendar, we hit our seasons. It was basically winter. It, it kind of gradually got a little bit warmer, like hit the 70s, and then it like kind of dropped off the 50s and 60s and all that stuff during the spring. Yeah. And then literally on the first day of summer, it was like 85. 80 degrees. Yeah. And it's been <laughs> like that since. So yeah. it's very impressive. I actually enjoy having the different seasons, but you're right. Doing a podcast in the garage uh, when it was a high of 90 degrees today is... We, we dealt with it last year, though. We got through it. I know. You look miserable. I'm, gonna, I'm sweating I'm, my ass off. You can have hair to hold I up your sweat. I do yeah, not. Yeah, no. And I'm so glad that I got new shorts that fit me. So I don't have to wear pants. It's good. I got jeans on. <laughs> you all have to wear jeans, uh, basically. Wear jeans, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, if this is your first time tuning in tonight, we talk about whiskey, we talk about cigars, and we talk about a life topic. And we really, really hope you enjoy it. And that's what we think separates us from the rest of the pack is the life topic and most of the time we really enjoy the people that are on our live and even the comments all over social media that you guys and gals get into conversations with each other and not even towards us or asking each other questions and stuff like that so it's a lot of fun but so what are we uh smoking tonight we are smoking um this is uh, our Toro Fuente uh it is a uh, Magnum R so it's Magnum R44 which this was, I'll look it up here, but it was uh, the number six cigar not too long ago on the aficionado, uh, aficionado list for this size. But I've always really enjoyed this this cigar. It's um, And I'll go into it a little bit of, about Fuente and, yeah. and about the actual cigar. So, But it is, if you guys have had it, I know a lot of you have had the Fuentes out there, but uh, it, it, as it says on the label, Rosado, Grand Reserva, the R stands for uh, Rosado, okay. which is the wrapper. We'll get into that more. So Magnum R. Uh, 44. Very nice. So we want to shout out to our sponsors real quick. Thank you, Tinderbox at Easton, for providing the Fuente. Sh I'm sorry, I just forgot it. The R. What is it? Magnum R. <laughs> Magnum R. <laughs> I'm sorry. Magnum. Was it 26 letters in the alphabet? Yeah. Yeah. One in 26. Uh, maybe 52 for Jake. I don't know. Fuck you. <laughs> Welcome, Dustin. Like, I mean, what like was it supposed to be A? Magnum A? Like. No. Yeah. A Fuente. Anyways, yeah. So, that, and then thank you, uh, Altidus, always, for supporting us, for providing the Monte Cristo Monte. Is this the original Monte? No, this is uh, something that came out a few years back, actually. This was, it was not the original Monte Cristo, but it is, oh, it's, you're asking the Monte Monte part yeah. of it? Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, it was the first time they, brand, they did a brand extension. They did the Romeo by Romeo. Yeah. This is the Monte by Monte Cristo. Okay. So, yeah, you, you got it. Okay, cool. And thank you, VS Cigar Company, Brian and Steve. You guys make a great cigar. There's always a couple floating around. It's normally our third cigar of the evening. So we thank you guys very, very much. So, want to get in the whiskey? All good on shares? On the BS, I will say um, we are basically, if you're not in tomorrow or the next day, we are going to be out of the BS Gold. That is uh, no longer until we reblend it. So we have okay. depleted, almost depleted the, uh, the inventory of the BS Gold. We are, we are working on that project. Uh, hopefully in that couple months we'll have some BS Golds. Uh, BS Silvers, however, who we blended with Eric Espinosa, yeah. back in stock. We have the Toros and the Rabitos, which the Rabitos were initially just an event-only cigar, but we now have that. Trying to help out with the, the Golds going away, we've got yeah. a third size officially of the BS Silver. So uh, excited about that. We're hoping to get the, uh, the six and a half by 58 size in soon. That was nice of Eric Espinosa to do that, like to get the, the reviews again. Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. So, thank you everyone. And so, getting on to our whiskey of the evening, like I said at the beginning, uh, Steve was gracious enough to get the George Dickel number 8 and the number 12. So this is George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey. And yes folks, that is without an E, surprisingly enough. Um, the interesting part about that is um, mostly the E derives from um, the Gaelic history of it. Um, or, yeah, so. Good it, use of Gaelic. Yeah. That's twice in one show. I think that's yeah. the point that we've ever used it. I don't think we've ever said it other than tonight. <laughs> Maybe I said Gaelic before. <laughs> but yeah, so it kind of derives from that um, along with the Scottish heritage because um, they, use, they use whiskey without an E. Um, and so I'm not really exactly sure why they decided to use this without an E because if you look at Jack Daniels, it's with an E and most American whiskeys, actually all of them are with an E. That's kind of the Americanization of the, 
of whiskey with an E, right? Um, I feel like we normally take away letters, like flavor. You know, like, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Like, like flavor, you know, that instead of O-U-R? Just it's O-R. O-R. Oh. Or both flavor and flavor. Yeah, that's good. Flavor and flavor, I'm talking like, like that's <laughs> I like your point though, Logan. <laughs> that's what you take away. Or flavor, flavor, yeah, 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 you're right, take away. <laughs> No, but it's cool. Good, definitely a good point there. Yeah, it's cool. We're going to do a slight <laughs> comparison with this. We're going to start with the George Dickel number eight. Um, I okay. alluded to the fact at the beginning that these numbers have nothing to do with the age of the product itself. However, the eight is around that five to seven year mark of a blend. Really? Um, and then the 12 is going to be t between an eight and a 10 year blend. Um, it's It's nice to know it's that crazy. yeah it's nice to know though that these are actually the two same they're they're the same exact mash bills just different ages is that right yeah um which it, it's kind of interesting because the blends itself that's where the numbers come from like it was blend number eight yeah. and then i don't know what happened to nine ten and eleven but then there was twelve yeah <laughs> so it's kind of like maker's mark when they did the 46 um you know the 46 derives from that was the 46 recipe that they tried okay. to make things work. See, and I didn't even know that. I love Maker's Place. Yeah. That's one of my favorite yeah. bourbons. Yeah, so it's the same way um, with these. It's kind of an interesting story behind the history of it, and, and if Steve wants to on the back there, it kind of explains the story, but it, it, it actually derives from a man that was called George Dickel. That's his name. Yeah, and so he bought a bunch of whiskey off of, is it Cascade Hollows? That's what they keep talking about. Yeah. It's Cascade Hollows. Yeah, and uh, it was actually spring water in Tennessee, and that's where that's kind of where he set his feet in and bought the whiskey because the story goes is that the spring water was exceptional for making whiskey. Um, kind of how Kentucky, you know, always says that limestone water they are, they're on a limestone bedrock that filters the water, and that's what makes Kentucky bourbon the best whiskey out there. You know, so. But it goes the same thing for this kind of stuff. It's really smooth. The eight is at 80 proof, and then the 12, the 12th recipe is at 90 proof. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so. And I mean, I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, you know, so we got um, a few people on the Facebook Live, which is nice. We have Mark, Mock. <laughs> Mock's been on here. From New York? Uh, yeah, so he said he had, he said Dinkle, but I think he meant to say <laughs> Dinkle. Uh, very hard and, and hard, uh, underrated and hard to find, actually, in, in New York, as he says. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in, in Ohio at least, it's interesting. These are ones that I think a lot of people pass by, including myself. But uh, the eight, number eight, classic number eight, is something that uh, is, I think, seventeen ninety nine on the shelf. And then the t number 12 is nineteen ninety nine only. Yeah. There's a $2 difference on these two. And they have a Dickel Rye, which I was going to get as well, but I thought we might get carried away since there's not a lot of people yeah. in the garage. I didn't want to throw three bottles of whiskey on the table. I've heard that George Dickel Rye is a great rye for... The money, um, probably. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, but um, I, I like it initially. Even the eighty proof has a lot of flavor off the nose. It was something interesting that Logan mentioned at the beginning because Logan's actually had this before. Um, Steve and I have had it, and it's it does have that citrus note you were talking about. Like you, it goes well with um, citrusy flavors or the the cigar that you had was the H Upman, the yes. Nick Rockman. But this does have a lot of citrus notes to the nose. Um, at, I mean, I think it's got a lot of orange peel. Um, initially, before I noticed the citrus, I thought pear as a fruit. It's got a lot of fruit notes in it. Um, but I that like the honey, orange peel because it already has like almost like a, an old fashioned smell. Yeah, it like, does. And it's not mixed, obviously. But. Yeah, it does, definitely. And that's why I was, you know, was going to mention that, you know, the vanilla's there, the honey's there. Um, right. Just, but it has that classic Tennessee whiskey smoothness, okay. being yeah. being chill filtered, having the Lincoln County process with it, which means that it was um, charcoal filtered um, before it was put into the barrel, um, and that that kind of creates the smoothness that becomes Tennessee whiskey. Mm. Yeah, so now, I'm definitely a connoisseur of whiskey, but <laughs> learning about you definitely are or not. I I am. That's you are. Like, basically. <laughs> Basically, all we drink is tequila and whiskey. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not a beer guy. So, um, but learning about it is fascinating. I yeah. mean, just, 
it's science, it's history, it's all kinds of things that I enjoy, and all mixed together, and then you can drink it. And yeah, then you drink it. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty neat. There is a ton of just fruit notes in this nose. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I get a little bit of spice though in the nose too, though. Yeah, but it doesn't translate very much to the taste. I mean, it's the just spice? smooth. Oh, it's I agree with smooth. you. I agree with you completely. I get it in the nose. I'm actually surprised because I hadn't really smelled it until I had a drink of it. Yeah. I don't know. I I kind of went through my glass just to get <laughs> ahead of you guys, but uh, I think like there's an interesting like pepper spice like on the the back end. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Like in the back of the throat, it, it it really lingers for a whiskey that is low proof, not really aged that long. Um, the oil lays heavy. It does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, well. it stays there for a while. It yeah. Gives you all those flavors. I'll ask you this, Logan. Is there anything that you have no, you noticed tonight more than you did before tasting um, this for like I don't know second, third, fourth time? <laughs> yeah, but when I was this would be I mean I only had a bottle of it and it was a while back and I wasn't drinking it to like discover the nuances. I was more just drinking it just to enjoy it and yeah. I, I use it a lot for a mixer too. I, I think yeah, I'm old fashioned and you know it's phenomenal with you know you know just Coke basically making a jacket of Coke and stuff. So. Dick one coat. Dick one coat. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The credit words do. But yeah. but no, so God I, damn this right. is this is the uh this is the first time I've ever like, you know, tried to categorize the different flavors in there or something. It's it's phenomenal. Well I it think really is. especially for the price point. That's that's what, what I was gonna say. It's interesting for the price point, right? I mean like you don't typically sit back at, at a seventeen ninety nine bottle with this. It's mostly like oh, I can use it in Manhattans or old fashions or it's a mixer, yeah. As you said, Jack and Coke with some dickel. But, uh, <laughs> Some people gonna, might hear that wrong. Tickle and Pepsi. Yeah, right, yeah tickle and Pepsi. Yeah, exactly. Go go off script. But it's not one that you typically are going to sit down, drink neat. I think at that price point, typically people right. aren't going to do that. You're not going to sit down and like, hey, let's pour this neat and, and see what's what it's all about. And that's what. And that's. I mean, I did the same thing. So I missed that. It's it is so. I mean, it's got such a variety of flavors. And yeah. It's really vibrant for a, a Tennessee whiskey. Like it's mostly, I think Tennessee whiskey being just smooth vanilla, honey. But like, I hate to keep bringing it up, but the the vibrancy of the the fruit flavors and the citrus flavors is mm-hmm. just really interesting for you know tasting it for the first time. And I, I think there's a lot of bottles out there that a lot of people don't know that are under that twenty dollar mark that they can just sip and, and enjoy. This would be nice too on a day like today because it does have, I don't know if that's the Tennessee thing you're talking about, but it's got this, um, like that, that it's, it's not down here. It's like a lighter, lighter flavor, you know, as yeah. opposed to like some of the bourbons that are going to have more depth to it, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't burn your gut. It just, yeah. It's not as, yeah, well, it's definitely not as hot, but yeah. throw a couple ice cubes in this like you would like a Jack and I think it tastes really good on a, on a hot day. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Why'd you make that face? Because that's me? Yeah, yeah, Jake. <laughs> Just because, I, I don't know, I just think it'd be like too watered down. I mean, that's I, what I'm saying. Like, if you're sitting outside, it's 90 degrees. I mean, you're sweating as it is. I mean, that's yeah. like a, oh, you can still be drinking whiskey. Yeah. And also feel slightly refreshed. It might I actually know. release some more flavors, too. It just, could. Just a little bit of it. A little, little bit. bit. Yeah. A little bit. I don't know. What I would do on a hot day is, Steve knows, I, I make uh, peach tea. Peach tea. So I like go and get peaches and cut them up. And I do, I go get just like Lipton peach tea and put that all in a jug and get like a half gallon of just Evan Williams one, just like okay. the black label and I pour it's, it's like a quart, it's like a, like one part to three parts. <laughs> so it's like probably like, I don't know how, it's like probably a quarter of that half gallon <laughs> in this jug and then the rest is tea and peaches, man. Yeah. And that's good. No, I hope you guys like it. See, and that's why our second part, I know this is bourbon based, but it's tequila. Cause like on a, on like a hot day, there's nothing better than a fresh fruit. Fresh fruit? Just fresh, like, you know, grapefruit or orange juice with tequila. It's just, man, I tell you what. All right, so the next time you come on the podcast, we're going to do a, a bourbon and BS tequila night. Wow. Does That's that work? Just for me. Yeah, yeah thank you. you. I like that. I got some tequila that you need to try, too. Yeah. I know you said you like Anejos, and I like Anejos, too. Yeah. What, what Ray said? Ray said, uh, hey, Jake, I got a bottle of JV Signature Craft 12-year-old. What should I expect? JB Signature Craft. What? I, I guess. Is that, is that Jim Beam? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's is kind that of. What it is? Yeah. Craft. Remember we had the Signature Craft not too long. It was that really small pint bottle with the red label. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what. Um, 
I think for Ray, I think um, it would be smooth. I think it's a good bottle. I, I think it's there's a lot of remember the well we did the um, red wheat. The oh yeah, yeah, crash. I remember that. Yeah, and there's, and there's probably about five or six different signature crafts that they did out there, Ray. But um, with Jim Beam, there's always those subtle nuances of vanilla. You're always going to have the oak. Thank you, Dustin, for the rag. Um, you're going to have... Uh, the camera's picking up a sheen off the forehead. Right? Yeah. Get the makeup guy in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, I, I think you should just open it and try it. I, I, yeah. I'm sure that you'll like it, but it's de you're definitely going to get a lot of oak, a lot of vanilla, and get those classic bourbon flavors and maybe notice exactly. something that I don't... No, yet. <laughs> we also have, and for those of you on, on the audio only, I mean, again, this is a great reminder to be a part of the conversation if you're available on Wednesday nights uh, on Facebook uh, Live. It's, we're talking about, we mentioned tequila, and it's got, yeah, Beth's his, I'm saying, I want to be at that one. Jonathan Herring from General Cigars has been on with Ricky. Uh, I'm coming to tequila night, and Alicia, the infamous Alicia, says, true. I think she's talking about tequila night. I don't know. <laughs> And then Mox says, only drink tequila in the summer need with a slice of lime. So again, with that fruit you're talking about. Are you and that's, and that's exactly what we do. We'll go back from like bourbon in, in the winter and then we go right over to tequila. It's, I mean, it's a clockwork. Is Mark talking about like, like shots? That. Like tequila <laughs> shots? It could, like, it could you, be. Do you like put Sobriety. like salt like on your thumb? And so maybe, then, that's, no, maybe that's what he means by <laughs> neat. Summer, you know, in the summertime he drinks it neat in a shot glass with a lime. And There's a difference between yeah. sipping and shooting. Oh. Mock. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eric Black says, Dickel tastes like pickles to me. I don't know if he is tasting in rhymes or if he really does think it tastes like pickles. There are some people out there that taste pickle and, and bourbons and, and, mm. and whiskeys. And it's, it's, so, thing. it's so interesting. I don't know how they pick it up. I really don't think I've ever tasted that. I, I did once. I did once and it, I had to really, really search for it. Hmm. It was like, it, and I think that at the time I was kind of, I don't think I was misinterpreting, but I was interpreting the sour taste because some whiskeys do have an interesting sour when they're mixed with a citrus vibrancy like this does. Yeah. And then they think that it is, it tastes like dill. Because like if you say it, it you're going to think it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you might be I, I think you taste it right. Yeah. We also have Joseph Noble, if you're still out there. What's up listening while delivering pizza, you know, working hard and, it's and great. enjoying the podcast. It's great. And then we have one more. Uh, is it ever on IG? So if you guys are on audio, or if you're on Facebook Live, you watch this on, on YouTube when we post it. We went away from my, uh, Instagram as far as the live because the TV feature is like 10 minutes long. And even if you have like enough viewers or whatever, it's like an hour long. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and when you save it as far as before, when we tried that, you could do a, a long live, but it would be there for 24 hours. So we switched over to Facebook at this point. Down the road, we'd like to do like a multi-broadcast thing where we can be on Facebook and possibly YouTube Live, but uh, we've been still expanding and growing thanks to all you guys listening on Facebook, uh, but also to the audio as well. But so unfortunately, we can't be on Instagram with this. We do have an Instagram page that has good content, but nothing, yes, yeah. nothing with this. We, we do that. Yeah. All I have is Instagram, so that's why I follow them. <laughs> yeah. But even for you, if you don't have Facebook, if you want to watch the video, again, every Friday we upload this video from, from our Facebook feed to YouTube. Okay. So then you can just subscribe on YouTube and then you'll get the notifications when that hits on Fridays. Usually I'm out and about, so I listen to audio. You, yeah, I mean, turn on Spotify, listen to the audio. There you go. There's several podcasts that I enjoy listening to. It's funny, I was never in the podcast until I started listening to this. And then Is I that right? Discovered, I'm dead serious. It was, <laughs> That's it, awesome. It was, it was the catalyst. And I listen to that about equal to music now. Is that right? And nice. I, I feel like it's just like music is like, it's amusing entertaining yeah. but then you know the information and I start learning stuff I like like when uh, you know uh, Grant was on here that was that was awesome yeah, yeah, great was, one. yeah. I was just listening like I was sucking it up I was just like, yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of good knowledge I think yeah. you're gonna have that as well tonight I've been listening to podcasts even like tonight between work and, and here I went to the gym I was listening to a podcast at the gym now every once in a while I still listen to music most of the time but I, I kind of with you like it kind of it's starting to creep into my you know even my morning routine sometimes oh, yeah. you know but one of the podcasts I like releases a new episode and it's like something that I'm not, I tune in and, and annoy Liz with by, you know, hearing people talk while she's trying to sleep, but <laughs> motivating for me on my, my day. I love uh, Ed Milet. That's one to look up. It's, he's phenomenal. I talk about it all the time. I love it. He is a wealth of knowledge. 
it'll be. Sora's yes. 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 Oh, man. Well, he, he was the one with uh, Manny Kushiabi, which I've followed for a long time, and this guy's story is insane. How he just, he, you know, he, he was a refugee, and he's, he's over hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate. I mean, he's building yeah. an empire yeah. out, of, out of nothing. Yeah. So, had the dog whisperer on on this episode. That's what I was listening to at the gym. Was Ed Milo? It was uh, he had the dog whisperer and his story about being an immigrant. That basically he he jumped the border. Basically he, he got in the country illegally, lived yeah. under a bridge for a couple months, and then you know started oh. illegally walking dogs with no leash. And, <laughs> and it's yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, uh, yeah definitely good ones. There's a lot of good podcasts out there. So before we yes. go on with that, yeah. Do you mind if I get into the twelve, or do you guys want to wait? Yeah. Uh, no. Go ahead. Okay. You want to kick that one back there? Yeah. Or Logan? Logan. I will, yeah, I will polish it off. <laughs> yeah. And then we can face it back a little bit. Yeah, so now we're moving on to George Dickel, number 12. And like we explained before, um, the 12 isn't the years that it was aged. It was the number of recipes. Before that. Yeah, um, so that they used to get it. And this is a 90 proof expression of theirs. Um, I'll just say this right off the bat at 90 proof. Like, this is much more up my alley. Sorry. Um, and it's, it's, the vibrancy is still there, but it's so faint, like the citrus isn't, it's, it's gone. This is the rich, creamy notes, yeah. the rich vanilla, the rich honey. Um, I was really surprised, and I'll ask Logan, because he's got a Glen Karen as well, um, if there's a lot of interesting spice, like a heavy spice, when you're trying to smell out of a Glen Karen off this one, it's interesting. It, it, there's a lot of alcohol content at 90 proof, yeah. I think. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, you can feel it in your nose when you sniff it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got more heat yeah. than I <laughs> exactly. expect. Exactly, for sure. But yeah, this is purely right up my alley. Like I said, the, the, the rich flavors is like my ballpark. And our we listeners and viewers about, know that. It's more like one of the like lighter end things. Sort of like my cigar see, like I've went all the way, you know, like oh, yeah. dark black cigar. But I mean, it's, it's trying to see how dark I could smoke. And, I enjoyed it, but I really favor the Connecticut. I mean, yeah. yeah but I don't know. I usually have coffee or something like that, so it, it actually works out pretty well. <laughs> do you drink coffee black, mm, or do you have cream and sugar? Cream or? and sugar, depending on like if I if I press it or if I brew it or whatever. Yeah, right. If I press it, I like it black. Yeah. yeah. So that would be something like even with a milder cigar, it, you can you can kind of get a lot more out of it. I, I think. Y- yes, I mean it brings out other flavors. Yeah. That's one experience I've never done is drink because I'm not a big coffee guy. So like okay. I I think I've maybe had it probably maybe ten <clears throat> times in my life. <laughs> so and one of the times is because AJ like forced me to have some when yeah. we had the Smoky Tenement this past year. Um, He's got good coffee. Yeah, he does. And uh, James Java, that's really good stuff. Um, but yeah, that, that's one thing I feel like I need to try because everyone says parents. there's like you know especially down in Cuba like Cuban coffee and cigars or. Well, America. they use they use sugar too. In that. Yeah, so I think coffee and cigars would be an interesting experience. See, uh, match made in heaven. I tell you. <laughs> Better than whiskey. Um, it just depends on the cigar. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, honestly, start I think the sometimes. morning off. Yeah, I think sometimes I think coffee is going to complement a cigar even better. Hmm. Cool. I'll try. Yeah. Gotta try. <laughs> I think you're right on this. It's a lot richer. This this number twelve. Yeah, I I really like that, and that was twenty bucks. Nineteen ninety nine on yeah. the shelf. Yeah. yeah. Plus uh, tax. That's no brainer for ninety proof. And, and this goes back to like we were talking about on Dino's podcast. We were on Whiskey Business um, last week, and when we were on there, we you know we were kind of talking about the proofs, and I was saying that I like you know kind of the opposite of Logan sure. where I'm you know I'm sticking around that 95 and above right but I'll dip down into some like like the George Dickel 8 and stuff like that but normally 95 and above is my range mostly 100 proofs right but um, but then I really like Eagle Rare that's like my go to favorite of all time I think but and that's 95 proof so I, I think it that's 95 proof. proof yeah I think it's perfect absolutely yeah this is good um I feel like the difference in recipe pulls out a ton of the citrus note. It's almost gone and replaced with like what you would traditionally think of in a bourbon. It's got more vanilla. It's got, I mean, caramel. Yes. No, mm. I haven't more had enough yet to taste it. I have some water. I put it in my palate. Oh, yeah. But it, it's definitely less. I guess the only way to say it would be like. 
refreshing versus like uh, a fuller body and more flavor. It slows like it down it's, a it's, a, it's a totally different flavor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think it slows your drinking down a little bit too. I mean, that's the other thing with like the lighter ones, you know, not, not just lighter proof, but it's just lighter flavors, I think, like right. we're talking about. Yeah. It, it's, you don't have, like this one is hitting me back kind of right here in like, exactly. you know, my throat. It's much deeper. It's, it's yeah. not really it's Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot more going on there. Uh, I get a little more spice from it, and it's not just the heat. I'm actually getting a little bit of like food spice, I think, from it. Yeah. With, I, with vanilla and this, the creaminess you're talking about, but like part of it is the burn at the end, but I mean, there is a, there's a, a bit more to it. I was getting it right off the nose, and I got it right off the taste. Like that, that it's it's not like deep. You're not getting a much of a hug off of it. At least I didn't. Maybe it's because it's of not your, Kentucky. Yeah. Well, thanks. But um, <laughs> I was. I was getting more of that black pepper like off the nose and like the straight back of my throat. As soon as it's hitting my tongue, I'm I'm like tasting something totally unique and I'm I haven't pinpointed it yet. I'm not sure if I will, <laughs> but it's it's good. This is really good. And that's the first time I've ever had that. The twelve? Yeah. It's weird calling number eight number twelve. Like it's easily like we normally saying like the twelve year, you know what I mean? Like right. that that is a good point that Jake made is that it's it's something that when I looked at it on the shelf, my first impression, the way they had it marketed on there, yeah, it all you see is Dickel, Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey, eight. And then around it, you see classic number eight recipe. Well, but that's... the eight is bold. Straight marketing scheme. Absolutely. Straight marketing course, scheme. Because but I mean, came, yeah. I mean, lately, the last, like, ten years or so, it's, all, it's been all about eight statements. And this is the superior recipe. It is. Right, right. But well, I think with that, though, Jack Daniels, right? What, yeah. Number six? Seven? Yeah, number seven. Yeah. Andy's Black bird. label, number well, seven. Then you have Andy's Don't little number seven. Bring up Andy. We, we've talked about Andy's number five too much, and no Our number disrespect five, right? uh, to those guys. I think uh, numbers. You don't like it? <laughs> numbers, right? We're talking about numbers? Cool. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. No, they're good, but say, like, you, you less than 40 bucks, and you have two bottles that you could have on two different days. I think that's a no-brainer. It's yeah. it's it, okay. It's oak. It's almost cedar. When it, it when it hits, it's that's got what that. It's just, <laughs> is, that what, is that what the bottle said, or that's what no, you're no, saying? No, no, no. That I'm, I just it's like hit me. I was trying to think. Like I'm I'm still tasting it. As soon as it hits, you got like a, you know that smell of cedar. I was just like yeah. That's that's what I'm getting. As soon as it touches my, my tongue, like immediately, and then it goes back. You're getting the smell tongue. of cedar when it touches your tongue. Very very woodsy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I get it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I like your observation too. I'm gonna buy a bottle of that probably. So yeah, it's 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 fairly readily available. It's funny that you know um, that Mock says that uh, it's hard to find in New York, but uh, you know in Ohio, from where I'm at, you know in, in Central Ohio, I've, I've seen it pretty much ever, everywhere. I think yeah. or at least one of them. I don't know if they're always both there. And again, I'm gonna. And now I'm gonna go out and get the Dickel Rye here coming up here in the next few weeks probably. Yeah, I'd be interested try to try that too. Good yeah. stuff, man. Thanks for getting it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is off of what we're drinking right now, but have you guys tried Proper 12 yet? I, I have, yeah. Irish. So the Scotch Proper 12, yeah. I'm actually a fan. Yeah? Yeah, I drank the whole bottle, but it's... Uh, you yeah, drank the whole bottle of one city? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't let it tell it. The, I, uh, no, but I drank the whole thing neat because I really enjoyed that. Has nothing to do with the fact that it was Conor McGregor's? No, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Uh, at least I don't think so. <laughs> I've had a few glasses of it. I think proper twelve is 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 decent. I think it it got a, like a bad rap overall, like from from Scott or from Irish drinkers. And see, I got a, I I read a whole lot of stuff that wasn't exactly favorable, but I got it anyway. And I tried it. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, again, but maybe it's because of twenty thirty bucks. We're right? used to this. Maybe it's it's more American than Irish, and that's why they had a problem with it. But I don't know. Could be. It's, yeah, it's not quite as light and smooth as a lot of the uh, everyday Irish whiskeys. True that, yeah. Uh, not, I'm not going high-end stuff. I'm going like that $20, 30 mark. But, <laughs> uh, just at this point, you know, while we're doing these taste tests, and I think, uh, I think if, if you want, you, you aren't, you're not going to go back, Jake, to the eight you, or the number eight, are you? Uh, I can. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to, do you? Probably not. I want to just, like, you know, rehydrate with some number eight. Yeah, <laughs> but um, just talking about Fuente, I don't think we've done much Fuente. I think we did the Casa Cuba on here before. I can't recall exactly. Yeah, we did the small, the, the Casa um, Cuba, the really tiny one. Yeah, but I mean, other than that, I mean, Fuente is something that we've kind of neglected, and it's it's for no particular reason. I mean, Fuentes basically sell themselves. They've been around for a long time. 
um, and, and definitely one of the, the more prominent Dominican uh, cigar brands, really. And this is actually one of my favorites. This is uh, what that from Fuente. Really, the Magnamar, absolutely. That's very. I've good. never seen you smoke this. I I smoke <laughs> it absolutely. Um, but I'm not around you every waking moment. Well, but. you're not. I don't really. I say it's one of my favorite Fuentes. I don't smoke Fuentes very often. I like the Casa Cuba like a lot. I like the the Magar. Um, I, I like from them. I mean, I do. I, I like an Opus. Not as much as some people like the Añejos. So my list of Fuentes that I would go to is fairly short, uh, other than some of the, the rare stuff. But, uh, you know, this is definitely one that I... It doesn't give me the typical, like, lighter, m milder Dominican tobacco appetite. Because it's not that. I think it's more medium-bodied. What is a lighter Dominican appetite? Well, so... For me, it just it's it's unpleasant. It doesn't sit on my my palate very well. Like I've been having more guys lately because summertime, guys and girls coming in, you know, and they're like, "What? I don't smoke very often, but I'm smoking, you know, summertime and all that stuff." Like, what doesn't leave an aftertaste for five days? They don't want to go too full body, and I'm like, actually, it, it's all dependent on the palate. So, what what have you smoked, if you recall, that that does that? Because for me, it's I have the opposite. When it's a very mild Dominican cigar, I wake up and and have that that nasty flavor in my mouth. Yeah. So it's it, it, it depends on what you like and everything, but this one's got uh, an Ecuadorian Rosado. That's where the R comes from. Yeah. Wrapper leaf, and it's uh, Fuente Dominican tobacco filler and binder. But uh, it, it's just it's interesting because they call it the Magnum, even though it's a small cigar. Yeah. The reason they do that is because this is a, a later edition. The Magnum was because most of it, like when they blended this, it was when everything was going a little bit fuller body. Okay. And so Fuente family went a little bit more on the medium side. Yeah. They kind of released something. I forget what year it was, but they released this and, and, and there were larger ring sizes for them, like 56. Yeah. You know, 52, but 50, like they were a little bit larger ring sizes. That's where the Magnum name came from. And then the, the R is obviously Rosado. This one, interesting enough, it's called the 44 size. And you'd think that's because it's. 44 ring gauge? Right. It's actually a 47 ring gauge. So what's a 44? How many cigars come in a box? Wow. For this size. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, di I didn't realize that. And so it's actually a 4 and 7 eighths by 47 cigar. <laughs> so we got two number like products between the whiskey and the cigar. and they don't Not what you would think. Yeah. And they, neither one of them mean what you would think they would mean. This is why it's a good pairing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of this cigar? Go ahead, Logan. Uh, it's very good. I it's the first time I've ever had this. Um, I've also not really done a Fuente. I mean, I think typically when I walk in, I'm like recommend something yeah. new to me. I don't think this has been on the list. Um, I I think I had it's not this one, but I had a Fuente before that just didn't sit well with me, and so I've reserved. I've I've kind of yeah. you know not really tried any others. But yeah. this is very good. Do you like it? I do. I like it a lot. It's smooth. It's not. I mean, it's not really harsh on the, you know, it's not really heating up middle of my tongue too much. It's it's light and airy. It's got a great draw. It's beautifully constructed. I mean, soft box press. Yeah, it's got a little bit. I don't know if it's it, a little square. It, it's a little bit. It's like a soft box press, but they don't really, I don't think they advertise it as a box press cigar. Maybe because there's 40 in a box. 44. 44 in a box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Ray Chester says four and seven eighths, question mark, question mark. Uh, he's English, so. Those are inches, not meters Feet? or centimeters. <laughs> meters. That'd be, that'd I don't know if that's awesome. what you're asking, right? But I mean, this is, you know, this is, this is America. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Even though it's made in the DR. I, I, I don't like, know what they use. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like it. I, it's interesting that, like, Logan's saying that it's smooth and... It's got like a light, it does have a good draw to it. It's good construction. I like this size, but it has like a weird, like black, like I'm getting that black pepper. Maybe it's just like the whiskey that's just sitting, but I, I'm getting a, a, it's a, like a good, like a good bitterness. What pepper? Yeah. Just, just a smidge. I get like, I you're on my ass tonight, aren't you? No, it's a green with you. It's a green with you, actually. It's a green with you, asshole. <laughs> You're both pretty. Um, yeah, I get it's not as much pepper, I guess, or maybe a slight mild 
bit of pepper, but it's, it's for me, this is, I guess one of the reasons I like this is that there's this, this uh, flavor, and I'm not good at describing the flavors, but it's almost like a warm spice. It almost gives me the, 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 the flavor of a, uh, of a, of a, a, a medium body rye whiskey. Okay. Like that kind of flavor. Okay. I don't know if you guys can taste that. It's not like the ginger snaps or anything we talk about like Christmas Day, but it's, it's getting there. It's almost like a fall type of a, of a, of a warm spice. Yeah. Like so you're, you're describing a, a feeling. And that's well, I, I, somewhat, relate, I relate more to that. And I, I agree. Somewhat of a feeling. If, like if you were drinking, like this would go well with a, um, a warm apple cider. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Do yeah, you, do you taste that? Cigar, and they're it, like, it's got a little bit of cedar with like maybe some caviar at the tail end. Of caviar? Like, what the heck? Damn. Damn. <laughs> but that's their experience. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like that, that, I, but me, I, you know, I think it's, it is more about like the, the feeling of it. Like it's uh, like, you know, light and cheerful or it's like real like, I mean, it's got nicotine, so it's like a heavy amount of nicotine, so it's like more relaxing or like. You know, that's kind of how it, I... You know, it might be, like, you, I see this, uh, and I don't know, that jar's probably still good. I hope it's tightened up that you brought over that moonshine, that, that apple pie. Oh, yeah. But definitely. that's actually something where, like, maybe it's it's like that cinnamon stick in there with the apple cider. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Take some puffs of this. Like, think of this. It's like, it's like that cinnamon stick in there with the, like, the, the apple, but, like, without the apple. But it's that same sensation for me as, like, that cinnamon stick. Yeah, so we put one flavor in. Cinnamon. Maybe some you, cinnamon. you agree or disagree? I would agree. There's a little bit of cinnamon. It's not like big said, red cinnamon. Yeah, fireball yeah. whiskey, big red. No, no, no. fireball. As fireball. soon as you said, uh, as soon as you said, like the the fall, that's what I was like. Yeah, Changes, that's exactly right? it. That's Changes. exactly it. So, <laughs> I think cinnamon's great. I think that's yeah. yeah I'm, I'm getting cinnamon. There there. Like, are we talking about like a cinnamon spice latte? Like, what are you doing? I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> talking Ugg boots? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Blonde hair. He's got it. Kind of blonde. I can see him in nugs. <laughs> a little Lululemon. <laughs> Is it Lululemon or Lululemon? Or Lululemon. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I'm wearing them. I, I have no clue. Yeah. You're wearing them? I'm wearing Lululemon's. I don't know. We've always <laughs> thought it was I feel Lululemon. Like it's, I think it's Lululemon in America, maybe in France. Lululemon. It's Lululemon. Okay, so I actually, the only reference I have to it being said correctly is... Um, Lululemon. Well, Lululemon? Uh, what's it? What's, uh, chips. The new chips movie. He says it. You think they say it right? I, I mean, I suppose. I mean, it's <laughs> like a comedy. I don't know. I just want to go back <laughs> and say I'm really, really proud. Like, to bottom of my heart, that's that's like the first time that I've heard Steve like create like an experience and like go deep into. Like, I, I've I've created. I know, but scenarios. That was, yeah, but scenarios not before. like roll the roll like tape that. back on other episodes. Not like Who that. Who describes bacon? Somebody said something tastes like bacon. Not tonight. No, 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 but in like in the past, I was like, <laughs> Probably. I don't know if I've ever picked up bacon before. I can't I remember which one it was, but. I, I don't know. remember that one. Yeah. Whatever that is, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to smoke the shit out of it. I, I do want to touch on, I don't want to smoke shit out of bacon. Just eat bacon, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Are you on the 12? Is this a 12? Yes. You, those two go great together. I think, the, I, I think it goes well with both of them, but I mean, that's just because the number eight doesn't really, I don't want to say it doesn't stand up for itself, but it's more of a complimenting whiskey. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that, it's light enough that it's gonna go with anything. Like I, I can tell you didn't care for it, Jake, just because it was too light. There's not much there. Yeah, I think it's good flavor. I think you get. Some I think I'm gonna go back to it because <laughs> I, it's hot as shit. I, I don't know. I, I, it's just both our realms. Our yeah, realms it are is. different. It is, and that's fine. I mean, you, you drink what you like, and that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think it goes well together. I just I, okay. But very brief. This is something that I did pull up because I was looking at this, and once again, not smoking a lot of Fuentes, but. You know, we, we sell a lot. Obviously, it's a, a great family brand. We talked about the Fuente family briefly when we talked about the uh, J.C. Newman family, if you remember that. We were talking about the Newman history when we were smoking those cigars. Yeah. And how they, they did uh, merge. Uh, I think Newman acquired Fuente or, or vice versa, but there's a merger there. But if you see all this stuff, like, on the boxes and stuff like that, since 1912. Yeah. That's actually when Arturo founded it the first time at 24 years of age. And he had he had come from Cuba to um, uh, what it wasn't uh, it wasn't Ybor City yet. He came to uh, Key West, and then another immigrant from Cuba. And I didn't know. If you guys hear Ybor City, that's why I like some of this history. Ybor City, have you heard of that down in Tampa area? I haven't. It, it's like a major like little cigar hub, right? Oh. But that was it, 
a Span the Spaniard uh, Vincent Martinez Ebor left Key West and founded the now world famous cigar town Ebor City. Huh, so a little nice. stuff like that. It's, it's in Tampa area. But uh, anyways, you know, so the Arturo he started it in nineteen twelve. Uh, and then in, in 1924, so 12 years later, and they have a history of this. If you look into this, I'm not going to get through all this stuff here, but 1924, 12 years later, uh, it, it, the factory burned down while he was in Cuba buying tobacco. Remember, this is all before the embargo. You know, they're, they're way back history-wise. Right. Uh, so then he spent the next 22 years working, it says, as a general manager to repay debts owed from the losses caused by the fire. Wow. That's the that's the the old patriarch, right? That's a shame. Yeah, it's it's terrible. So then they, you know, it was uh, the 1940. So fast forward, uh, they started rolling cigars in the the back of their house. There you go. Family. Innovative. That's where Carlos came in. You hear it, Carlos. Yeah. And uh, they is that Don Carlos? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the Carlos, and and uh, uh, he passed away not too long ago, unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, anyways, like the. the Carlos' wife at the time in the 50s was working at the Cuesta Ray factory. Carlos started selling cigars, and it says he did it on credit, which was unheard of at the time. Paid off all this stuff. He was, you know, doing all this stuff. And then, you know, by, uh, what was it, 1956, he was running the factory, and then it kind of just kept expanding and expanding. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but if you look through this, and I'm not going to go through all this stuff, they still have a store in Ybor City. But uh, it, it's funny because I know they've had other history of fires in some of their warehouses. They, uh, well, right there, Hurricane George in 1989 destroyed 17 out of the 19 tobacco barns. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, we talked about this with, uh, what would I just say, who, who it was that was doing this two, two weeks ago? The Placencia. Yeah. How they went to, you know, Honduras because they were they basically, they kept having these, like, problems. And I think this is a, a chance, the reason I wanted to get into the history, because this is something that, much like we were talking about with that one, that was uh, moving forward for, uh, over just moving on yeah. with, with Andy uh, Pullman on that one. But this is something going into that, that entrepreneur side. And this will like kind of kind of frame the, the interview slash uh, you know, conversation is that you, know, you see all of these things where they're starting businesses, they're going into hardships, and they're basically, you know, but then when it comes down to it, sometimes it doesn't work out. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't mean it's the last time you can do something with that. You know, yeah. it's like you started something, shit happened. <laughs> And now he's working as a general manager, so he's back to a day job, if you will, yeah, yeah. and still living life, still moving forward, still doing all this stuff, but still has that dream, if you will, or it kind of transfers to the, you know, never leaves. They're rolling cigars, for Christ's sake, in the back of their home right? while he's doing this. He's got, you know, like the kids and the family, I guess part of their blood, as part of their, yeah. what they want to do is, is to be in this business. And so, you know, you fast forward to the 90s and they just, just go and went crazy, and then you fast forward to 2011, a fire burned down two large tobacco warehouses at the Fuente uh, farms. And once again, it, it basically can, it completely destroyed large inventories of aged tobacco and possibly caused smoke damage to some in nearby storage facilities. Mm. Like they have a history of these, these fires and crises Crazy happening that, you know, again, with, with you, Logan, and we can start that, that part of the, 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 the podcast if, you, if you're ready. Do you mind if I ask a few questions about this? Go ahead, yeah. How many? Do you and know, I may not know all the answers to this. I mean, do you know yeah. how many, like, uh, so that they started, you know, making the tobacco and rolling tobacco out of the back of the van, basically in the back of the store. Back of the house. Back of the house. Yeah. And then, so, you know, fast forward, you know, 100 years, pretty much, it's, or, you know, 90 yeah. or 80 years. What, how many factories do they have now? It's, it's mostly now, Dominican tobacco. It's, yeah, they're, they're based out of Dominican Republic. Let me see if I can find something here. Um, so at a hundred years, so that would have been 2012. I'm trying to see, I mean, like basically, you know, as you, you go through their history, it's really interesting because it says, you know, one of the first of the kind was that they did the Figurado, you know, the short story, the Hemingway series, yeah, all that stuff. Those are good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Um, so even in 2018, they did another 69,000 square foot facility. Wow. So, I mean, they're still expanding. That's huge. Uh, I don't see, let me see if I can find anything as, as far as, I don't see anything what they're doing now as far as volume. But it says back in Nicaragua, so they have a factory, and they at least have a factory in Nicaragua. They now. do, and I don't see. And that was in that, well, January 26th of 18. Right, and they, they, they became part of, like, again, the Fuente and Newman <laughs> families are announced, you know, police announced that, that, uh, Fuente and Newman Premium Cigars Limited Inc. will be renamed the Arturo Fuente Cigar Company. So again, I, there was a time where you know, um, 
in, in the '90s, I think that Newman and them kind of synced up business wise. Yeah. And that could be, you know, a, a part of some of those those crises that they were going through. You know what I mean? They might have had to like basically be like someone wanted to bail them out, if you will, right. or at least be like, hey, we want to, we'll get involved with you guys at this time and, and and keep this going because of all the history and because you guys are good at what you do. Right. Even though you keep hitting these, you know, the fires or the storms or all this stuff. I mean, again, shit happens, but you know. That they're that good at what they do, and, and people believe in them. Even another company did that, and they, they basically bought into it. And that's that's huge. I mean, that's uh, that's part of that's part of our story too. Is um, I mean, what you see there is somebody who's just they're keeping at it. Like whether they were rolling in the back of their house or they had these factors or whatever, they kept the dream alive because they knew at some point like, this is you know, this is what I love doing. Yeah. And so. Um, and look what it look what happened with them. I mean, it's incredible, and you got the, all this history now, and their story is part of what makes the brand so incredible. And, uh, and they have some of the most sought after cigars in the entire world. Absolutely, and I'm I'm sure like without those hardships, maybe they would have never gotten to that point because yeah, you they, never know how that happens. The you know, they, they they had to focus so much on being the very best of what they did because without that, I mean, they would have caved at some point. That's a, that's a lot to go through. Well, again, I mean, yeah, they say that he, he worked, you know, 22 years, 22 years as a general manager after the first fire because they weren't right. set up for that. And you're going yeah. back to the 1920s, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not it's not like you just saw the insurance is going to come and you're going to get a big check and right. blah, 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 blah. No, it's like shit's ruined. Like, it, like dream's over. And that was a hard time in America anyways. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and he showed all kinds of characters. speak up just a little bit. We're going to be saving it right now here. Uh, um, yeah, so, yeah, we're going to be saving it at this point. So, Facebook, if you guys want to share it briefly, um, we don't want to lose it. So I already did. And, it's 73, uh, right? Yeah, episode 73. And I want to say shout out to Phil Eisinger and uh, James Ryan Miller. It's good to see you guys. It's been a long time since I've seen you. So, hope you enjoy it if you're still on here. So. And Ray Chester, because before we start doing this, uh, <laughs> the five inches thing, like why not? Maybe? I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I, maybe I, I, my my mind leads to like some of these are going to be like maybe they are going off of like centimeters, and then the, the cigar people, yeah, the yeah. cigar people, the cigar people are going, you know, but, yeah. <laughs> so four and seven eighths. I I don't know why why they do that. I mean, it's just they probably tried the five and then was like cut this off because this tastes better. <laughs> well, to your guys' point, I mean, it could be this. <laughs> You know, some of these sizes and stuff could have been a mistake at one point. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, literally, that eighth of an inch was just something to either set themselves apart or someone cut it wrong, and they're like, oh, this tastes great. And then they, like, look at the mold, and you're like, you idiot. We said <laughs> yeah. 5 by 47. Like, why 47 and not 48 ring gauge? Yeah. It's just, I think it's a lot of trial and error. I yeah, real I like the mis- I like the mistake idea because that happens in the whiskey community too. Like, and Ray, really now, yeah, we're getting your question. We're saving. It, so. <laughs> I'm sorry it's not gonna be the audio, but at least that, I mean that's part of the beauty of the video part. If you got you gotta watch the video, and you also have to do the audio. And I, yeah, sometimes you get different things from different things. Can you mind if I ask Logan a few questions at the beginning? No, go ahead. All right. So Logan, now that we're getting on to help yourself, like an entrepreneur mentality mindset sort of thing, like. The reason why I know Steve wanted you on here is because like you're the you're the only one out of the three of us that have actually done something. And that no, twenty seven uh, <laughs> done well, something. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean I because see, uh, what I was trying to explain the last cigar is is that pretty impressive. Like I think I should be taking tips. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but it, Steve said a lot of stuff that, that doesn't really I mean, I try to relate it to this, right? <laughs> but, well, I'll relate it to the conversation. But go, go over these questions. No, question. so I, so at twenty seven years old, you basically have like three corporations at, at a, right? It, right. Yeah. LLCs, so it, but LLCs. LLCs. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that matters, and so like right. when, like, what are they, and when did they start? Because it, it, I don't know. At, at an age like that, it's just like. You've been busy. <laughs> Very busy. Over the last couple of years is when the exponential growth has has really happened. So um, give some backstory. Like I started out in um, mowing people's yards. You know, something simple. People don't really think. On your own? On my own. Okay. When I was 15, um, I bought my neighbor's rider, ride on mower, you know, and uh, started mowing different 
people's yards in the neighborhood. You know, yeah. basically what I could get to on my rider, and I had got a trailer as well. That's what I got. That's what I did. That was my that was my little company. And uh, you know, they paid cash. I thought I was. I mean, I thought I was rich. So, <laughs> you know, started with that, and uh, I kind of got the bug for it. Like I, I really enjoyed doing it. Like there's so much satisfaction in you know doing a job well and leaving it, and everything just looks looks nice, and you know your client's happy. So that's where I got like the bug for being an, an entrepreneur, so to speak, or you know, basically doing your own thing. And See, that's what Steve doing and I were talking about. Doing we didn't know. Well. Yeah. We didn't know if this was a. Well, I didn't know if this was a the 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 lawn mowing and the LLCs were a bigger like a means to an end to get to what your bigger aspiration yes, is. Yes and no. I mean, this it's a it's a it's an incredible thing as it is. I mean, it's. Uh, I'll tell you some more about about the businesses. The next the next step. I mean, if we're talking about the the, the trajectory of things, the next step for me was um, working for somebody, labor, learning the tricks of the trade, simple things like that. I mean, people think, yeah, you just go cut your yard. Well, if you want to do it right, and if you want to do it where people want to employ you and they like, wow, my yard looks better than all my neighbors, you have to start learning things about it. There's, there's science behind it. There's technique behind it. There's there's all kinds of things you wouldn't expect. Of yeah. So went straight from that to a crew lead, and then I had a hiatus where I worked. Um, this is actually where we met, Steve. Was yeah. uh, I worked at J.P. Morgan Chase in mortgage um, because I I had kind of bought into this idea of like uh, you need security. Um, I bought into that, and so I got a job at you know nine to five J.P. Morgan Chase. So that's you know most people think well, that's that's a, you know a great position to hold. So it is that. a good one. Though. Good, it's, good, it's good it benefits. Is, it is, yeah, classical. Good benefits. I'm, I'm not dogging on it at all. I'm not dogging yeah. for for anybody out there. And um, nothing bad to say except for about Jamie Dimon himself. And uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, all of a sudden podcast is shut down. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, Logan. But anyway, uh, it was during that time. Um, and we we fast forward all the way into my my young twenties at this point. It was it was during that time that I was like, I I hate this. I absolutely hate it. You know, having to show up, being told when I could go pee, when I could go have lunch, and I knew like, and I was doing very good work. Everything I did up to this point, even though I was working for other people, and I was trying to learn all these things, I still did it to the best of my abilities. And I think that's a big thing. People think that you know like. Well, I've got an entrepreneur spirit, so I'm just gonna like basically step on everybody on the way up. You know, like I'm. Mm-hmm. It's all gonna be a means to an end. That's interesting. Yeah, you can't. You you have to appreciate whether it's whether it's a good or a bad experience. You have to appreciate that experience for what it's taught you, negative or positive, it's both both a lesson. So, J.P. Morgan Chase. Thanks. The lesson was um, structure, showing up on time. Um, and also that I was absolutely not cut out for a nine to five type of job. Right. Sitting at a desk. Sitting at a desk. I mean, <laughs> like you said, great benefits. It was decent pay, especially in my early twenties and stuff like that. You know, if you mention like hey, I work at Jake Moore Chase, that's like, oh, that's that's a great job. I mean, you make a career out of that. But I was so disinterested in a career that it that that and some other things in my personal life were driving me to depression. I I hated it. I was still doing a great job. What's but, going on in the personal life? Can we ask? I mean. Just different at things. At that time. Yeah. Just at that time, different things with uh, relationship. I was having, I mean, personal life, we're talking about depression itself, um, was, right. you know, was something that it had got a hold of me. And it was, um, there was just a myriad of different things that had gotten me into a dark place. But at the end of the day, I felt trapped. And part of the reason I felt trapped is because when I was 15, I felt like, oh, I felt what I wanted to feel, and that was doing your own thing, making people happy, and being personally responsible for that. Yeah. If I, if I screwed up a call at at J.P. Morgan Chase, it, it was nothing. The person had a bad day because I made a phone call, but that, it's whatever. Yeah. I I could not take pride in my work. I was just doing my work to receive a paycheck. You right. Know, it's it's a uh, it's compensation for for giving part of your life away. The fulfillment wasn't there. There was no fulfillment except for I could pay my bills. Yeah. yeah, and so um, I hated that to no end, but I still stuck it out for about two years. And I remember vividly the day I was sitting in my desk by the window. I was looking out over the ponds and stuff like that, and I saw back then Brickman. It's now Brightview, but I saw Brickman pull up with a truck. And I saw all these guys get out, and I saw them start mowing, laying beautiful stripes, you know, doing their thing. And um, 
it wasn't like they were out there like you know having like a, a heyday, a wonderful time, stuff like that. But but they were outside. They were doing their job well. And when they left, you know, I watched the whole thing. You can tell they took pride in their work. Yeah. They, they double checked it. They were making sure that everything was good. And I saw that, and I'm like, I really miss that. Yeah. And it was it was it was it was just as much the actual job as it was that that sense of fulfillment. I really respect that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I quit. Um, I remember my 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 general manager, um, my supervisor, and my um, I forget what it was called. It's basically the guy over the whole floor I was on. Right. All three personally called me, telling me how big of a mistake I was making, that I was that I was killing my career, that I had. So they didn't ask you to come back. They basically were just calling you out. No, they were asking me to come back. They, okay. They were saying like, we, you know, you were on the docket for promotions. Like we we were watching you. Like you were doing a great job. Your numbers were great, and I'm like. My numbers, and then that's what I am. I'm a number team, and, and they're like, "Well, we, you know, we care about you. We want you here. You're, you're a great addition to the team, and stuff like that." And I'm like, I, basically, all three of them kindly because I, I cared about these people. I told them to shove it that I that I couldn't do it anymore, yeah. and and I, I quit. And they're like, "Well, you're burning bridges." And I'm like, "That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn this bridge to the ground." Did you get two weeks? No, I quit. Um, <laughs> I I wanted to burn the bridge to the ground because I did not want to be able to cross it again. Right. And so, I immediately started searching for another position. I was unemployed. How how old were you at that point? Um, I'm trying to think of the uh, the whole timeline there. I, I think I was, man, like twenty two. I think it was twenty two. Twenty two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what was yeah, your personal life 22. at that point? My personal life at that point was in shambles, um, in a terrible relationship. Um, do you have yeah, kids at that point? At 22? No, not yet. And when you quit that job, no kids? No kids. And now you have two? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. But three, at that time... I three kids. Well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm saying, like, you know, <laughs> during the, the progression here, though, you, right. know, you, you basically, you had no kids. Right. But you, you were in a, a committed, I'm doing air quotes yes. the audio, but I mean, like, it was a committed relationship. Right. I mean, like, this is something you were doing, but in a bad place. And, and right. when it's all said and done, you're talking about depression, it's all said and done, you just walk out. Walk out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to frame that, that situation you, you entirely imagine. because it's a, it's a very powerful moment. It's a very powerful thing. Yeah. And it was it was terrifying, but it was also when I walked out, it was the most relieving thing I had done in forever. And I was I was looking at still having to pay for two car payments, rent, all the normal bills you would expect. Um, life. Yeah. Groceries. Life. Groceries. All that stuff. <laughs> but I was done. You yeah. know, I was. So I was so sick and tired of getting up at four thirty to make sure I was up in Easton one time. It was almost a, an hour and a half. Talk bad about Easton. No, no, Easton is one of my favorite places. Thank you, about about Easton for sponsoring that's, that's us. Only where the job was. <laughs> that's only where the job was. So I was so sick and tired of of getting up dead tired to go to work, drive an hour and a half back because of traffic down thirty three, plop on the couch. Watch TV, totally uninspired, not doing anything but building somebody else's dreams. Yeah. Doing my job well the whole time. And I think that's key. You can't forget. Still do what you're supposed to do. Do your job. If you're an employee, do your job. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Somebody's still paying you to do your job. So whether no matter how you feel, don't bring that to the don't bring that to the desk. But the point is, I knew when I fell asleep at night, usually on the couch, yeah. that, you know, I was gonna wake up and go through the same exact thing. And it was the deepest, darkest depression that I've ever had in my life. Um, instead of uh, whiskey being something that I enjoy, whiskey was being something that I needed. Um, there was you enjoy all, being drunk. I enjoyed that. But I'm, exactly. That's what yeah, I'm hearing. Exactly. Okay. You know, it, okay. Was, it was an escape instead of a, a luxury like it should be. You know? Yeah. Um, all kinds of different things. Um, I've always been, you know, I play football, I play rugby now, I've got a personal trainer. Um, I've always been very fit, very active. Yeah. Not at all. Like you, you guys, if you saw pictures, you wouldn't even recognize me. I have um, some of those pictures of myself in a <laughs> in similar yeah. light yeah. in my uh, late twenties, early thirties. So sure. I know those pictures. I can imagine. All over, all over in a bad place. So when I talk about them saying you want to burn, you're going to burn a bridge. That was like, I was like, 
here's the match. Yeah, exactly. That's what I want to do. I'm not ever going back. Well, you were frustrated. You were angry. You were, I, I mean, was everything. A, everything yeah. was negative at that point, correct? It was very, very, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the darkest place I've ever been in my life. My parents were, were scared for me, you know. Really? Um, That's powerful. My brother was, he was angry because um, the relationship, he, he hated it from the beginning. Um, Older, younger? Younger brother. Younger brother. Yep, three yeah. years younger. Okay. He's now one of my employees. Um, and also, we he actually owns a business under the inter- Enterprises with me. Um, he, so he's part of Manning Enterprises. 5149. Uh, he, not of that, but of a business under the, the tree company. So... That's the other one. That's the other one that was just started. That's um, not one of the three we talked about. Correct? It isn't, no. Okay, what's that one called? That's uh, Manny Brothers Tree Service. It's okay. something simple. It's not something we're trying to expand. Basically, I'm trying to give my brother a comfortable living. He's a real meat and potatoes guy. Uh-huh. You know, he, he wants to live in the country. He's got a wonderful girl. Um, they're getting married. And he just wants to have a livable wage, but Good. not really report to anybody. You know, basically, it yeah. be his own baby, too. And so... Um, we we came up with his own thing. He's a he's a feller. He's got all the he's all got all the equipment for tree climbing and roping. He knows how to rig. He knows all the crazy stuff. He's like, I love doing trees. I'm like, well, let's start a business. Yeah. yeah. And so you know that's kind of where we that's that's a brand new. But it's just you guys or him. Basically, just him right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. It's it's just in its inception. I mean, we've I like only, it though. That's we've cool. only we've done under ten grand worth of work so far this year. So. Um, yeah, yeah, it's good for half a year, and you guys just started the business this year. Yeah, so it's but it's a it's a it's a little it's a little baby company, but it's it's awesome because basically the, the only reason I want to do it is like my brother hates paperwork. He's like I I am not I'm not gonna handle any of that. I was like I'll do all that if you just get out there and cut the trees down. Yeah. So that's why we came to the partnership agreement. I think it's very very yeah. neat. So and you're that's, bringing some of that, that expertise that you've learned. You haven't even gotten to, but you you're bringing some of that now. Yeah. You're you're helping someone that's so been so close to you absolutely yeah it, it sounds like that and we don't we didn't get to like the other two yet but yeah it, it sounds like the aspirations are based on kind of uh just um like the yard work like making people making sure that people's houses are the way that they want it is, is right. that the passion for you like the, the that was passion. one of the things that you mentioned was like the, your fulfillment is allowing to like making people happy in the product that you're producing so in our household our kids all three of our kids um my beautiful fiance myself we ask are you happy that's something that you hear all the time in our house are you happy because success that and that's what it is i mean at the end of the day it's it's a happiness it's, it doesn't have a dollar figure um, they, I know people who are successful, they're happy, and they're making $30,000 a year. Yeah. I know people who are happy and they're successful. Some of our closest friends were millionaires. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's something we ask all the time in our house is, are you happy? So yeah, you're exactly right. It's bringing that sense of fulfillment, that sense of joy, that sense of satisfaction um, to other people. You know, I want my brother to be happy. I don't want him ever to feel like to take care of his, you know, his girl or... You know, pay for his mortgage. He has to go out and and work for some other tree company and right. report and get stuck in right. So, the solution is let's do our own thing. Yeah. Because there's, there's tons of trees to cut down out there. I mean, it's fine. We just have to get them. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that that's the motivation. It is absolutely the motivation. Obviously, we enjoy the the freedom and the toys that come with the money, but that that is not the motivation. Yeah. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. Happiness is what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Are you happy? I mean, that's what it boils down to. You got one life to live. If you sit back and you think like, uh, if you try to justify why you're miserable, you, you probably got a problem. Yeah. You, you probably and if you're just, you're just shooting for the money. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a never any quest. Right. And that, that goes for people who are in a, a nine to five or people who are aspiring you know entrepreneurs people who are entrepreneurs people who are own you know corporations it, it goes across the board and, and that's why I say it doesn't have a position that doesn't have a dollar figure it has uh, an intangible where you know you're enjoying what you're doing you're enjoying it you're not miserable you're not you're not just existing so um, I think that's that's the that's the biggest thing I, I wanted to touch on and that, that that this can go like we can talk all night about it about yeah. what actual success is yeah because people think of success as like you know, uh, this I if once I make seven figures I'll be successful. Yeah. No, guess what? When you make your first million, 
if you aren't the person you should be inside, it, it's going to feel like it's not going to be any different than 30000 Right. Because you're not going to be happy. You're I just going to be able to buy a cooler car. So, yeah, what, I mean, I, I'm not even going to get to some of the notes that I, I wrote down from what you said, because that, that is a lot of knowledge. I, I'm interested, though, I mean, because what I'm, I'll, I'll touch on a couple things that you did, did talk about, though, is that when you talk about, like, being a number, you were looking out this, this yard crew, right? You yeah. know, you're doing all this stuff. You know, coming from a, a service industry background myself, before, right. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm in retail and customer service at the, the cigar shop, but... You know, coming from the, the hard labor side of it, there were plenty of those employees that were out there in, in the industry I was a, a part of that they felt the same way. Right. right. I mean, there is it was moving in storage, and so it's like you, you literally empty this this household or this 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 commercial um, contract, and you put them in a new place, and you do the full you know white glove treatment. Basically, when you leave, they're basically ready to go to sleep at night. Yeah. Other than putting the sheets on, I mean, we didn't really offer that, but I mean, other than that, it's like here, here, we set up your bed. Everything's, you know, the boxes are in the rooms you need to go with. There's a sense of accomplishment, but then there is, there still is that resentment for some people. And sometimes it doesn't go away. Like they, they think they want to own a business. Oh, well, right. I hate, damn the man, I don't want to work for someone else, all this stuff, right? But they're not willing to do it. They're not willing to do it. That There's a part of it. There is a, a part that I think that some people that they, they default to bitching, they default to like complaining about it. Right. But it's the mentality of it. you want to start a business so that that's what I want to ask you if we're talking about this is is where do you go to gain all this knowledge what did you do to go from walking out of a place like a, a very cushy even though you were starting out I mean like say you know you're 22 at that time you're 27 now which right. the compliments are coming in you know Ray again who's who's been I'm glad he's up early wherever he's at in Vietnam or wherever he's at but you know he, he's saying uh, you know he likes you very unusual day didn't follow the crowd and uh, or whatever everyone else else's expectations were, and then he asked, "How old is he?" He talks like a fifty year old. I think he's just trying to justify his age. Right. But I think there's part of it too that you know when Dustin said he's twenty seven, reminding him that he's like good for him. But it, it's it's when if you were to go from twenty two that five year span, you're still at Chase. You probably would be making probably eighty thousand dollars with your workout if they were truly looking at you yeah. and you, you were good at what you were doing. Probably so. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but Not to at all. you. You wanted to go do this, so what's the difference when I'm looking at this this scenario of the entrepreneur mentality and, and help yourself is the is the topic today. Right. So you can go from I'm thinking of back to some of the movers that you know when I was in when I was a mover when I was in college even when I was all the way fast forward ten years later twelve years later when I was a GM and and, and working with you know 120 employees salespeople that were pissed off and they're like I want to make six figures and then it's right. like you look at a resume and you're like. All right, two years ago, you were working at this sales job. Two years after that, you were at this sales job. And now you're doing this sales job, and you're still pissed off. So now you're going to leave this one and go to another sales job. Yeah. Movers are, you know, I, I should make more. I should go do this, blah, 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 blah. And they're there five years later. Right. It, it's, what's the, what's, what's the transition? So that's, that's where, the, well, I guess what I'm asking is, is help yourself. There's steps there because we have, I feel like, only really scraped the surface. Jake always talks about, like, some of these entrepreneur, like, uh, podcasts and like you know the Instagram pages and that's what a lot of it is it's this like kind of memes or, or cliche sayings and all right. that stuff and it's like you know like some like our topic tonight daily motivation help yeah. yourself right you know take what the does that mean? what is the mechanics yeah, what the fuck you do I mean like yeah. what, give, give us if you can if you feel comfortable with it the fact that when you just glaze over the fact to a lot of people myself included I'm, I'm amazed at this point when when you are saying like my brother didn't want to work for someone else. He cuts trees. He knows what he's doing. So I just say, let's start a business. And so right. for the last six months or so, give or take, we've owned a business and we've been doing this. You say it with such ease. At 22 years old, when you walked out oh, of your I'm job right. and no, you were in a depression and you no, were just like, my life is basically over, but fuck this. I, I'm, I'm even not happy about this. Now I'm not happy about everything in my life. Right, exactly. I've hit the 100% mark of everything I'm not happy about. Yes. And it totally then, then like, like, how did you help yourself to, to actually gain the knowledge? Because I think it's not just about entrepreneurship or starting your own businesses, but whether or not you are, you're not going to start a business, you know, are you happy, you know, 30K, right. a million dollars, you know, all that stuff that you said. How do you get to that point of taking that next step, whether it is working to start your own business right. or be your own boss, or it's finding a new career that you might be happy with? What would what, you do? 
I found my happy. Um, basically, um, I love that statement still. Yeah, and basically, um, there was still there. Nothing was rectified as far as uh, personal life. Um, my parents at that point, which they're incredibly supportive, amazing parents, um, but they were like questioning my sanity because of the move I just made, and I was I was unemployed. Um, they were they were definitely questioning my sanity. Like this was a, a career. I said I'm I'm not interested in a career. And they're like, well, what do you want to do? And and I basically told them the, them the same thing. I said I just want to be happy. And and they're like, well, what does that mean? I said. That was figuring, my follow-up I'm question. I'm, I mean, I'm figuring it out. They may be two of them. You know, five years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what does that I, mean? Yeah, I'm figuring it out, but it's it's a sense of fulfillment, and I know I'd felt it before. You know, because I grew up happy. Yeah. Like my parents created this. This, you know, they would support whatever I did, and I was happy. And and I and you know, again, going out mowing people's yards and that, I I knew what that felt like already. So I was like, I'm, I'm gonna find it. So I went back to my roots, and uh, I started. Uh, Shortly afterwards, I started, um, I was the operations manager for a larger commercial landscape company in Columbus. That's when I saw you more. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I was in there working all the time, smoking cigars and stuff. But, um, Great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you get to do that. It's a good pairing. Yeah. Um, and I, I took that position. It was, um, well, let me, let me go off the track. You'll know you're making the right move when things out of the blue start falling in, in line for you. This 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 job came completely out of the blue. It was a contact that I had made back when I was in landscaping and and uh, turf care. Previous to J P Morgan Chase, he called me completely out of the blue a few months afterwards and said, "I know this guy looking for an operations manager," and I was like, "All right." Did you I, go to college? I didn't. I've never been to college. Okay. That, I think this is, I mean, we don't get into that, but I just, I'm sure. curious asking this, you know what I mean? Yeah, everything that I've learned has been hard knocks in, in life experience. Okay. Um, now, I would, at some point, I do want to go learn some more practical application things. Some people have told me that it's not necessary where I'm in life, but I, I just, for my own fulfillment, I, I feel like that's something I want to do at some point. You might actually gain, like, instead of just getting a piece of paper, you might actually find classes that you... You might gain I already know. Though. I already know what I need to look for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. yeah. So I took this position, um, and it was it was good pay. Um, they paid for all my fuel, good salary. Uh, you know, I got a percentage of all the sales that I did, and uh, I took that. And over the next three years, I learned every in and out of the commercial business. And that's when I found out, like, not only do I like this business. But I like the commercial side of it. Right. So um, I learned every in and out of it, as far as uh, all the things that I didn't know, as far as just your your daily how tos, but like the business end of things. So um, not to throw anybody under the bus, and I know nobody listening will hear. So I'm not going to say names or anything. But the owner of this business was a non-existent owner. Yeah. Hands he off owner. Completely hands off. He had another career, and this was his fun money, and you know. So I was put in a position where I was completely thrown into the fire, thrown to the wolves, and like, here, run this company. Yeah. And not only did I run the company, but I took it from about $160,000 to almost $700,000. And what was the time frame there? And the time frame for that was two years. Oh my gosh. So um, needless to say, uh, he liked me. Yeah. And uh, I was learning different procedures and stuff like that, but the thing is, something weird happened. Uh, with this owner where once he saw how much money we were making he started completely tightening the grips on me <laughs> he had completely let me run free and i, I know had how that is business. i know how it is and once he realized what i was building a monster completely on my name because he was non-existent right he's like oh you need to sign a non-compete two and a half years after the fact did you sign no way jose no way were you is that when like what happened yeah, that's then? when that's when shit started to hit the fan because i told him no i'm not signing it's not gonna be i have built you a company single-handedly yeah while you chilled by your pool for two and a half years if you let me keep doing this i'll keep doing it because i'm making good money and he can get a bigger pool you can get a bigger pool just leave me alone <laughs> yeah let exactly. me do my thing because i found my happy at this point and that's right. building a business right and um i uh but no, it was, uh, the pressure was on um, all kinds of stuff, like trying to start uh, checking on 
everything I did, he wanted complete client lists. These are personally garnished client lists, some that I brought with me to the table. Yeah. He wanted records of all my client lists, all this stuff like that, with a non-compete. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and mind you, I was a 1099 employee. Yeah, exactly. It's so not at like that it, point? I was still 1099. So you're shaking off 20% so I'm, I'm off of sub, everything that you yeah, made. I'm a subcontractor, yeah. and I, I don't owe any of my client lists or anything to this guy. So I was running it as a sub, his company as a subcontractor with 700% growth. And so um, that's when things started to get real hairy for me. And um, along this time also, um, in, in that time frame, I had, uh, in that, that time frame, I had one kid and another on the way and um, everything in my personal life blew to pieces too. And uh, I, it was a long time coming. I knew this it was, was the same problems from before back. Same problems. So 22, yeah. fast forward, yeah, a couple years, exactly. two, two, three years later. Yeah, exactly. Same problems, but now just uh, everything that I thought, everything that I was suspicious of, everything that I was worried about, everything my my family and friends had told me came to light, and it was it was over. So do you think, if we just put a pause on it one second, and we can dive however deep that you are comfortable with, sure. but... Do you think that that was kind of put on the back burner, the suspicions and whatever it was or whatever it was about because you were doing well in your career at that time? Uh, no. no. So, um, and this is a rabble hole. We'll leave it all the time. <laughs> Before you do that, I, I do, I saw a big spike. So I just shared it again on, on a lot of these groups, right? Yeah. So we're on a lot of cigar and bourbon groups, right? That's where right. we do a lot of this stuff. So if you guys are tuning in on Facebook Live right now, which I, I think is fantastic, we're doing this. I posted. I said Logan's dropping knowledge over some some drinks and and cigars, <laughs> and all that. of a sudden, it, like the viewership doubled in the last like thirty seconds to to a minute and a half. Nice. So to bring you guys into speed here, the little recap is that we're talking to Logan Manning. If you guys haven't tuned in uh, earlier and you're on the Facebook Live, we've already done the cigar review. Go back and look at that. We've already done the bourbon reviews. We, you know, go back and look at that. But now we're talking about where Logan's been in the entrepreneurship, owning currently three companies and, and sky's the limit going forward. But I just want to kind of give, now that we're at that point where these people are coming in, like what the hell are they talking about? Yeah. That we give them a little bit of a recap of yeah. where we're at in the conversation. Sure. So they might tune in for a, a bourbon or cigar review and be like, what the hell are these people talking about? Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, I'm sorry, I just wanted to yeah, give no, you you're fine, Yeah, you're fine. But anyway, um, to answer your question, Jake, um, a lot of my my inability to re to uh, acknowledge what was going on was because of how I, I was I was brought up. I was brought up extremely religious. Yeah. That you basically put your head down and get through it instead of do the right thing. Were you married? I was. You were married. Okay, so that was something you left out there, right? Yes. So you were married. Um, and uh, it was it was one of those things where um, I just don't know. How to, I don't know how to really put it into words. It was it was a high pressure situation. Um, in retrospect, I mean everything's clear when you look back at it. But I, I would have never yeah. done it. But I was very pressured. Yeah. And and I thought I was doing the right thing. And the whole time, even though for I mean basically since the point I was, it was it was six months after I got married. It was over. It was done. It was wow. Over. Wow. Six months after. So at twenty two when you were you were talking about that early depression, you guys weren't even married at that point, you were you were in a relationship. Uh is that right? I think it was about the same time after about the same I got time. married, yeah. So, um it was over six months afterwards. Wow. Um sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. I mean it's I appreciate that, but it, it it's all part of the story and um talking to that guy talk saying I feel I sound like I'm fifty, I think that that aged me about twenty years. Well, it's, so. it's the the whys coming out. Like it, it's it, just it's the experiences that you've gone through. It's, it's things out. I don't want my sons to ever do. And, and me and my fiance um, have decided we would never try to push them towards anything because of the absolute disaster it can cause. And Does that, she have a similar background? Um, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Basically, yeah, you guys found each other with all it, that stuff. We did. Yeah, we that's did. Very and, that, and that was really amazing because we, we, uh, we were two very broken people and we, I mean, the pieces, I mean, the pieces came together perfectly. And she's, she's everything. I haven't had, I haven't had a day of depression since then. 
Yeah, your, your, your Instagram posts make me kind of puke a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm no, I mean, it's I'm like so mushy. cute. Yeah. Like, you're both good photographers, and it's like, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, like, yeah just, I don't know what. Just, just get a travel along photographer. Just like so, you know what I mean? Like, teach one of the kids, <laughs> to, teach the kids to, like, take the shots. Yeah, then, exactly. Yeah. Well, and I want to know what Roman actually takes those. the pictures. Yeah. See, yeah, Roman, oh, I don't doubt that. Roman's already into taking the pictures. That's hilarious. It's fantastic. I'm just giving you shit. But, well, just so people know, my eldest is named Roman. Uh, and then Bradley and then Marley is our youngest. So, and then, but anyway, uh, yeah, everything, uh, everything at that point, even though for years it was over and, and I knew it was over, but I was, I thought I was doing the right thing, you yeah. know, coming from a very religious background, something like that. I thought I was doing the, the right thing, whatever. End of the day, two incredibly beautiful children and a entire lifelong lesson learned in a couple years. Yeah. What not to do, what to do, what to look for. And you're right five at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, exactly. So anyway, um, okay. I, I want to go ahead, bring a couple thoughts in there. Sure. Yeah. Is that with that, that part of it, it, it's, we've talked about other things on the podcast before regarding some of these situations in life, right. business, career, whatever, personal relationships. A couple of things that I, I, I kind of see, you know, are you are you happy? And you you, you said finding you're happy. I mean, this right. is something that people oversimplify, but all of the all of the the backstory and the the, the trials and tribulations, the growth parts, right? That, that's really it's not just a saying, you know, find you're happy or are you happy? There there's there's meaning behind it. And then if you want to talk like when someone says like, what does that mean? When your parents asked you that at 22, you didn't know. I didn't know. So I knew it was a feeling that I had before. But what's but happening now is that you 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 you've learned you're happy. It's been my happy for years now. Because yeah. I think you know this is something, and I'm not trying to like, like to, to steer anyone any any which way if they're listening and they have things going on in their life. But you also said talking about doing the right thing. I, I I've gone through that myself. You know, sure. my my relationships, my kids, my career. You know, doing the right thing. You put the work in because you thought you were doing the right thing. And I'm not going to get into the other side sidebars that, that that factor in at that point. Right. But at a certain point, you, you realize that you, you do have to let go. It's not at, at first sign of, of warning or first sign of trouble. It's, it's literally like you put in years of trying to, what well, you thought, do the right thing versus finding you're happy. Sure. And, and as soon as those two things start coinciding, those two mentalities, and I'm listening to what you're saying. I love a lot of like everything you're saying. Is that when you can get your your find you're happy or, or be ha- are you happy right. and doing the right thing? If you're doing the right thing and you're not happy, that that may or may not be always the best thing. And you can come up with an alternate circumstance to figure out how to take care of people that you care about. Right. But the happy is taking care of yourself as well. But most of the time, when you think you're doing the right thing, you're not doing the right thing for for your life and your closest loved ones, you're doing the right thing for what others what others think about you. It's an expectation. It's an expectation. You're doing the, the right thing to you is actually an expectation set by whether it's society, a religious structure, um, your your family, if they're overbearing, your friends, peers, whatever it is, you're not doing the right thing. It feels like the right thing because they're all telling you, oh, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. But it's it's absolutely not because you can feel it destroying you. Well, and Jake's, Jake, your dad on here, David Sanders, look out, here comes Steve's relationship advice. I'm not, I mean, that is part of it. It's also, I think, the career advice, honestly. It's, it's these different times of your career is that you don't flee at the first sign of trouble whether it be relationship, whether Absolutely it be whether it be career. No. You have it's, to have and, to and I know you, I, I appreciate, I hope you're mostly in jest there, David. But, I'm saying this in the career as well, is that when you do that, you know, every time you, your, your, your boss says something wrong or you don't, you know, get the bonus and you feel like you got screwed over, right. you go quit. You can't always do exactly what Logan did, which is, I'm just going to walk out the door tomorrow. Right. It's, you, you got you to gotta find your happy, you know what I mean? Whether it be in, in relationships or, or business or anything else. But and I'm not, I'm not suggesting what's happened in my life as a template for anybody. I'm just telling you how, strong points how I got from where I was to where I am. And right. I'm just yeah. getting started. I'm I not, love I'm not, I, I absolutely love what you've said so far. Because, like, this is what I've been, like, trying to say for the last 72, 73 episodes. Okay. But I haven't been able to say it right because I don't have the experience. Because you got three more years on me. 
So it's like... Well, and hopefully you don't have to go through a whole lot of it. I mean, and that's a big thing is learning from, letting other people, you know, learning from other people's hurt. Well, and the difference yeah. is also is that it's like you can do the prideful moments where you do realize, like, you know, like you said, like when you did walk out of J.P. Morgan, like right. everybody thought you were an idiot. You're, you know, you're, I'm sure your friends were like scared for you, like telling you different stories yeah. and stuff like that. And that's fine because they care, right? They care. But yeah. you knew in your heart where it, not necessarily where it would take you. You just knew that you had to work hard to get to where your happy yeah. was even though you didn't see the light and to where that happy was. You don't have to have a clear plan and a path as long as you know what you want your end destination to be. Um, if you have the resolve and you have the work ethic to get to that end destination, the rest is gonna fall in place. Yeah. And, and it might suck. It might really suck. So but it, it will happen. Let, right? let me ask this because it sounds like I, I really, <laughs> I like the I love the concept because it's a classic just like work hard and you know something falls and it's just like you're you, you found you're happy and it's a great story right. but besides that before your operations manager came to be what what was your mindset within that time frame because it because I'm I'm in that time frame right now in my life so it's like and, and I've said the same thing is that, you know, I'll, I'll apply to all this stuff. I'll do what I need to do to just keep my head above water. But I know that this is where I want to be. Right. So what was your mindset that before that kind of came to just fall in your, you know, not just fall in your lap, you know, because you right. took the steps to work hard and Well, and, and I mean, I don't know if you guys believe in this or not, but I, I had put the energy out there for what I wanted. And I believe that that's reciprocate. I believe that's a that. very real thing. Explain um, that. You'll hear it over and over um, from people who have experienced it, and it might seem like some focus focus nonsense. And so you've experienced it, you and you realize this is not hocus focus is real. If you if you've already decided, like for instance, I, I heard one one entrepreneur who's uh, he's worth millions and millions set, talking about sitting down and drawing out a plan. Uh, what he wanted, not not like how he's going to get there, but what his goal was. Yeah. I mean, down to the point where he specifics, and he he had this in his mind, and he was ready to pursue it. the The rest ended up fall not fall. I, I don't know how to say except for falling into place. You're looking. I mean, you're looking really hard. But I believe when you put when you put the positive energy out there of what you're trying to accomplish, I believe that it okay. absolutely attracts. Yeah. What you're looking for. Yeah. I, I believe this in the law of attraction is, is very real. Um, I've experienced it over and over again and I mean it has merit to it. Like right? first and foremost, that changes your frame of mind. It does. And that's that change, that, that's exactly the biggest I, I think the biggest part is that that first step is putting that positivity, like forcing yourself possibly. Yeah. I mean you're talking about coming out of depression at that point and, and a very, very uh, sounds like possibly a, a toxic relationship. Very and, and all, I mean, you're going down this path of what you think is right in, in both your personal and your, your your business, you know, life. Right. But doing that first step of putting that positivity out there yeah. is you almost, you, you may have to force yourself. You do. It's, it's the catalyst for growth, but it's, uh, but does that it can entail, be incredibly painful. <clears throat> yeah. Does that entail like, just like, like when you're networking, like what, like what does the, well, I, I'll. That's build, what I'm trying to understand here. If, if I can build off that, because I kind of got to that question. I mean, to to make that like a two parter. Right. Honestly, is when you said like the next step, and you started like working at that that um, that level, like you were at the, the operations manager. Right. The the knowledge, like when you say, when I was saying, you just breezed over the fact that my brother's looking to do this, so let's start a business. You have to equip yourself. You don't just say that. That's what a lot of people say. I'm gonna, I, wanna, I wanna be an entrepreneur. I wanna be a, you know, start a business. I wanna do all this stuff. So to, to build but up- But he was equipped question. at that time. What did, 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 when, how did you educate yourself how to set up three LLCs, not four? I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the so, knowledge part. You can't just say it, you know what I mean? Like That was, a, that was that. Um, another way that, um, Bethany, my fiance, has been a, a huge blessing. She has a business degree, okay. um, and I I had learned a bunch of these things through research. I mean, people talk about like I mean, you'll t 
tell somebody where something is and they'll be like, oh, I can't find the address right. because they won't Google it. Yeah. Well, it's all out there. Yeah. If you really want it bad enough, you're going to find it. We get and calls at the cigar shop to ask us where we are and they look us up online. Right. And the address is literally <laughs> on their smartphone it's, underneath it's the, the phone to. number that they... I'm pretty sure they're not driving around with a, a, a white pages or right. yellow pages in their car. It's absolutely the one thing. Yeah. <laughs> so do. you don't, Justin. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the one too. Um, and and for like for our our largest company right now, um, uh, Bethany, which is Lotus. Okay. Yeah, Lotus Landscaping Solutions. Bethany and a team of lawyers handled the whole like the, the majority of that. Yeah. Um, but. Um, part of the, well, the way you can get there is knowing what you're, you're, you're not good at. Yeah. So you right. have to surround yourself with the people I like who that. can bring you up. I mean, if you want, if you want to, uh, I mean, this is just materialistic, but say you want to be a millionaire and you want to be great at sales and you want to build a business in, let's, let's just say you're selling real estate. Okay. Yeah. And you surround yourself by. A, a, a dropout who can't do math, a guy who rents and doesn't know the first thing about real estate, and a guy who can barely pay his bills, guess what you're gonna be? Yeah. You're gonna be the sum total of those three guys. Yeah. If you surround yourself by a guy who, by three guys or two guys or five guys, whatever it is, who, who already are equipped with the skills that you're, you're seeking out, yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna, so yeah, networking is part of it. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get that by you know being around them by asking questions. I mean, yeah. always ask questions. If you if you don't, the knowledge is always out there. It's the the desire to go and get it and learn it and stuff like that that sets people apart. Um, there's a there's millions of people out there, Steve, like you're saying, who like oh I want to be an entrepreneur. Right. And then you ask them like, well, what's your what's your what's your goals? Yeah. Well, I want to be rich. Okay, who doesn't? What's your Goals. What are you good at? What are yeah. you passionate about? What do you love? What avenues do you have to get into this? Do you have somebody who would support you? What do you want to do about it? What do you want to do about it? How long That's until you want to get That's a big question I think people don't ask. Yeah. Are you willing to work that hard? Are you willing not to take a paycheck for a long time? I yeah. mean, there's all these things. And then they're like, oh, I don't know about that. I just want to be an entrepreneur. You're not going to do it. It's all talk. Yeah. Soft. yeah. yeah. It's all talk. Like five years later, you talk to them and they're like, yeah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm yeah, I'm working I'm on my next thing. How's, 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 how's it going? I, I, yeah. Hate my job. Like, I know, think that's the yeah. only problem with like the entrepreneur like social media aspect. It is it's because people think they equate that to the luxuries of life, the oh my, the, that the money, and time. so they think that to get there, it's it's the new um, like businessman routine. The right. entrepreneur is like the new like. Well, I want to be like I, I just want to be in business. The guy who comes <laughs> in and introduces you to his his latest multi level marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I like I like a, a point that you, you said earlier, like when you were at that point and you were doing the operations management for the landscaping company, right? Yeah. And you were happy. I was. You had found at that point in your life you had found your happy and and you were good. You were growing a business, your right. hunger was being met, your creativity and your, your work ethic was, was being met, and then you get back to that that you go back to your roots and, and no pun intended, I mean talking about landscaping, but yeah. it's you get back to your roots and when that job is done, the, the landscaping looks good, the, the, the lawn looks at the right level, clients it's happy. healthy, yeah. the client's blown away. Like, so you have all these things. Not only do you see your finished product like an artist or, or you know, someone that actually did something, whether you actually did the work or not, but you're, you're, you're a part of this. You're, run, you're making sure this happens because like, your position in the, the chain changes, right? right? But you were okay building someone else's dream. I wasn't satisfied. I was happy. Okay. What, what, but that's, you're, you're saying, right? Like, you're yeah. happy. So I'm not saying yeah. that you necessarily aren't going to evolve, but, yeah. I, you know, you were talking about, like, when you were talking about, about Chase and how it's a good job, for some people, I think that's okay. I and mean, we're Absolutely. talking to a lot of people out here, so I, I do want to make a, a point here that if, for, for me especially, like, I, I'm okay. At some point, I might be doing something different. Right. Running You're my happy. own business, whatever. I mean, this is this is your passion. That's why you have a, a podcast about it. Like, the podcast, yeah. the, the work. Like, I wasn't happy building someone else's dream when I and I, I was actually in a transitional phase to make that my business. Right. And it was not. That was not the way to do it. 
you know, being an entrepreneur, just to be an entrepreneur is not necessarily, or be a, a business owner, a CEO is not yeah. just to do that. In, in my 20s, that was it. It was, what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next promotion? I'm miserable in this, two years later, now I'm gonna get a promotion. But I, I feel like you can have that, that a lot of things that you were learning, and, uh, and if, you do, if you are happy doing something, that, that's okay. If yeah. you're building someone else's dream and you feel well compensated and you have the creativity and you have the, the freedom that makes you happy, that you like going to work, right. you're in a good place. Yeah, that's, why constantly to yourself. that's why I can't stress enough. That's why I can't stress enough that it's not about how much you're worth and it's not about your position. It's it's simply about success. Yeah. Yeah. And success is is happiness, personal well being, um, those surrounding you. A sense of accomplishment so whether that's I mean whether that's working for the for the guy who owns a landscape company owning the landscape company whether that's being a real estate agent or being a real estate broker a developer um, part of it is also capacity I mean that's the, a very good point you know oh, there's there there not everybody has the same capacity yeah. and that's something very important to know as a business owner because you can have an employee who is just a, he's a kick-ass employee in this position, but if you promote him to a, a manager or a crew lead, he's gonna suck. And it's your fault. You're gonna fire this guy and you're gonna know it's your fault yeah. because you tried to push him past his capacity when he was good and he was doing his job well and he was happy. Well, you diagnosed that. I mean, you talk about capacity. I like the, the metaphor about a tool belt. Right. Have you ever heard that? I have. All right, so there's there's three sides of this. I'm going to try to remember all of it. But if you have an employee, right, and, and, and basically if they're not doing their job, there's, there's three factors of it. The, the two obvious ones are if they have a tool belt, right, right. they don't have enough slots. That's the capacity side of it, right? Yes. So like they, they're, they're hitting their, 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 their ceiling, which is fine. You can try to educate and try to do this. At a certain point, they only have so many slots in their tool belt to finish this job and to do the job, right? It, it's, it's maxed out. You give them more tools and they're falling off and they don't know what to do with them, right? They right. can't carry them with them. There's the other people that you, um, you, you, you give them the tools and they choose not to use them. Yeah. You show them, like, this is how you do this task with this tool and they literally choose not to do it. And the third is the fact that they've got empty slots on their, their tool belt and you haven't given them the tools. And they're yeah. pushing and that second one and they're is, hungry is, yeah exactly yeah. yeah so you're missing out like there's missing pieces of all three of those and and as a for you being a business owner as you keep expanding that and even a, almost like a self-reflection thing is like try to realize where you're at and, and see that that metaphor and try to put yourself in that those three different positions yeah where are you at right because that'll help you find you're happy the hunger will be met all that stuff is that when your tool belt is, is filled and you are choosing to use everything at your disposal to get things done, yeah, you're happy. But if you're ha if you have empty slot, like I got this slot here and I'm ready, like I, I want to do more jobs, I want to do more, yeah. you know, things. And, and the person I'm working for, then you start feeling underappreciated. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. That second one is the, the saddest one because then you have somebody with so the the second one where they have the slots but they're not willing to use the tools. Um, yeah, they that's have just, the full tool belt, the full but they're not tool, using they're not the one over them. here. Yeah. That's sad because they have the potential, but they're lazy. So exactly. that's, yeah, and exactly. that's kind of, that's the employee you don't want to ever hire. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. have a hundred guys who have limited slots on their tool belt than one guy who has the whole tool belt, but he won't use his tools. Those are the guys, and, and, and guys and girls, I mean, we're just talking in general here, but you know, those are the people that, the employees that you don't want to put into leadership or training roles. And we've talked. They'll start beating people with the tool. We've, that's the problem. We've talked a ton lazy. about that, and that's yeah. like that's been my experiences. The, yeah, yeah. The the leaders are put into leadership roles that aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. So yeah. like they have the capacity. They yeah. just Don't want to use. They it just all. don't want to use it. So what? In Whether the, it be laziness or whatever else is going on in their life, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that can be. I mean, that could be a myriad of things. But but what that translates to, and I think that's what you're getting at, Jake, is that. Um, when they have all those tools and they don't want to use them, they start 
handing off those two tools to people who don't have the slots. I love it. Or they start literally beating people with the tools because they expect them to do the job that they should be you doing. You fucking nailed it. I mean, that's it's amazing how metaphors work. Yeah. It's, that's amazing. <laughs> so, so I have two questions, like, moving on. And, and so with one of them being, and, and Steve knows you a lot better than I know you, right? Just through the tinderbox and like right, you guys know each other, but yeah, but so so one of it, one of your aspirations, like your biggest aspirations, I think, is like uh, real estate, right? Is that the um, that's so? It's not my biggest aspiration because I haven't I haven't done it yet to see if I have passion in it, but I do know that's where exponential wealth is 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 made possible. Um, yeah, that's one of that's one of a few avenues where it's possible, and and I'm trying to. Again, part of my happy is taking care of other people. Like, my parents are, they don't have a retirement, but they're some of the best people we've ever met. If they are not able to work tomorrow, they can't, they, they can't, I mean, my dad would figure it out because he's, he's a go-getter like I am, but. I like that. But he doesn't have a retirement, well, he doesn't have any of that. So, like, I, I want to be able to say. What age bracket are we talking about here? My dad? Yeah, your parents. Three. Fifties? Mid early fifties, mid early mid fifties. This is mid fifties. You should know this. Yeah. You should I, should, I, I don't even you know remember my birthdays? kids' birthdays. I don't. <laughs> if you have an iPhone, right? Yes. I put it in. I will. Um, I put them in as contacts, like my niece and nephews. Worst. My my niece has been a contact for a long time, so it pops up. Not only is it Morgan's birthday, but it, I know which birthday it is. Yeah. See, I'm the worst, and that's and that's another thing. You have to you have to be able to admit when you're really bad at something. And I'm giving you the the free tool. Yeah, yeah. That you, you can, can just go into your calendar and just hit like every year. Well, I like, have, I have it written it. down now, but I'm that's talking like you put it in as like you know Logan Manning's birthday is this like in your contact. Right. Now I know that your next one will be your 28th birthday. There you go. But she does it for you. <laughs> Technology's out there. Yes, yeah, sorry. All right, side yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, um, now I'm sidetracked. What were you talking about? No, you're like uh, realty. Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, anyway, yeah. I, I know that that's like, so we, we don't have like a, a, a monetary figure we're trying to get to. We have goals. We have things we want to get. We have things we want to do. Um, we are not super materialistic people, even though we have nice things, but we are experience-oriented people. Like I'm sure you've seen by my... my Instagram, yeah. we love to travel. We yeah. would, I would much rather spend my money, half my income on, on traveling and experiences and learning new cultures, meeting new people, yeah. trying new things, than I would um, anything else you can imagine. You know, whether it be like, you know, I'd rather spend 1200 bucks to, to go out to Florida for a weekend than, you know, if you like guns, buy a new AR or something. You yeah. know, to me, the experience is much more valuable than the than the than the material because at the, I mean at the end of your life what you're gonna do with that with the experience is you can, I mean, so you're uh, telling me to buy more whiskey, right? Buy more whiskey. Thank you. So, I just need someone to tell me. There you go. <laughs> I had a recent conversation last night regarding that. Yeah. So that's um. But so we don't have really have a monetary figure, but we do have goals, um, and that's very important because then you don't get disappointed as long as you're hitting your goals. It, it, you know. It, it doesn't have to have a dollar figure attached to yeah. it, or material thing attached to it, because yeah. you're still maintaining your happy. But what we want to do is we want to be able to take care of our parents. Yeah, it's it's crazy. That's too yeah, yeah, For those of you guys on, on, that are watching the video or you're listening to the audio, you hear it. Another day went by in Columbus, Ohio, and, and thank God we don't have any of them, like the big disasters that are going around, like flooding and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. We just have the annoying part of it, like it's another day, it wasn't supposed to rain. It's raining. Rain. And my car it's was rain. my car was clean for a day, I'll say. Uh, it's getting a nice wrench job right now. Yeah. Right? yeah. Go ahead. So so in my are, are you done? Oh, Sorry. Well, I, it's not as a mean way. I just mean because I had I had two questions. Would you shut up already? <laughs> Real estate is is definitely the next step. Um that's that's a little you know explain that. So like again, we, we talk like I'm, I'm speaking in Jake's language in a sense that he, he, he preaches to me about like all these like again, social media stuff, like, oh, real estate, make your money. You see all these ads, like, yeah. you can make, and this is going back to the 90s, if not further back, you know what I mean? Where it's like, come to my seminar, I'll teach you how to make millions off real estate. Oh, yeah. What do you want to do with real estate? Are you buying rentals? Are you buying houses and flipping them? I mean, are you what, are you buying commercial real estate? Like, or do you not know? Or that's do you, a, well, like, that's you a, know, well, are you, in, is this infancy stage? Uh, it's it's conception, um, basically, where like, we're- Before infancy. There you go. Um, 
we know what our path is, and so we're searching for the right tools to get there. So right now, I'm actively looking for an investor. Um, you guys are already in the realm with like the other businesses. It sounds like trees, yes. yards, yeah, landscaping. Exactly. I mean, my um, gosh, like why not houses? Yeah, you're looking for an investor. An investor. Um, basically, I uh, the best way to grow a business is OPM, other people's money. Sure. Um, uh, credit. That's great. You have to have line credit to operate a business. I mean, we have we we spend twenty thousand dollars a month just in payroll right now. So, I mean, you can't do that stuff without credit. Does that, um, does that include taxes and? and, and uh, no, that's just payroll. That's so, just yeah. Pay. So the, yeah. The, Are they on W twos or ten ninety nine? W two. Okay. 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 So that includes Social Security. That includes everything. Like your payroll budget yeah, is, yeah, exactly. is is twenty grand. Uh, twenty months grand a month is about where we are right now. Wow. Give or take. Um, what so, percentage? And I'm sorry, I, these are like business side. What percentage no. of the PL is that? Of a profit and loss? Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I'll tell you. 20 grand I versus how much in revenue? Yeah. No, don't pull the numbers, oh, yeah, but yeah, it's okay. ballpark. It's About 47, 50,000 a month. Okay. So it's a huge, right I mean, you're, you're, you're pushing 40% of your it is payroll. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's not typical for my line of work, and that goes back to taking care of people. Yeah, you know, I like the that. most important. Like I pay my guys significantly more than industry standard. Oh yeah. Um, in return, they give me significantly better. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, that being said, uh, real estate. Real estate. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a doozy for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I now I'm trying to think of numbers and stuff. I'm all squalled up. No, just say what you feel. Like, like, like I mean, yeah. what's 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 the why the aspiration? Why, why really? I mean, you said why, but. Yeah, so, so, um, we're looking for an investor. I mean, using other people's money, we want to get into the, the, the ground floor, so to speak. And the first step with that, based on, on what I, and we try to educate ourselves, is uh, the first step is, is, you know, some sort of like a low risk and a more high yield. So, basically, what we want to do first is get a couple, um, uh, whether it be a, like a four unit. Uh, apartment complex or a couple of duplexes yeah. and the idea is to buy renovate so that you immediately build equity into the building right um, you refinance you pay off your investor you keep the additional equity right, right. that equity goes back into a cash amount into your account and then you rent them out so that you have your passive income you roll that equity that you got after you paid off your investor into your next maybe with a little bit more seed money from your investor until the point you don't need an investor and you do it with your own money. And then um, at that point you can choose to go into commercial, you can choose whatever direction you want at that point. But um, I'm not trying to become a landlord. I'm trying to hold assets that are liquidatable for profit once the margin shoots back up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, you sell them? Sell them, yeah. So basically um, trying to drive cash, trying to drive cash, cash flow versus I would like to have a little bit of a passive income that comes in, but the, at the end of the day, it's it's taken straight into you know cash out. Yeah, the, that, the, that's our that's our goal. The yeah. passive income is is you need volume there, right? Because the passive yeah. income at that point, if you don't if you only have like say two properties, that passive income is completely just wrecked when something goes wrong and you yeah. have a bad you tenant. An AC unit. Yeah. Or yeah, so you have a yeah, good tenant and, and the utility that's goes bad, but if you have a bad tenant and they move out, you have to evict them and they just trash the place. It's right. like I made call it five grand and I just put seven grand into making this place so yeah. I can I can rent it back out again. So let so somebody else thing. assume that risk and they'll if that's already what they do, let them purchase it because they already have these right. new properties. Let them assume the risk and you focus on so that's kind of the, the make sure you can pay it back too, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to be smart about it. I mean, it, it's that's a. I mean, that's a scary. I mean, for someone that went to college that's our age, yeah, that's scary. It is because you already have fifty, sixty thousand dollars in debt, right. and you're wanting to start something, and you're asking for another loan. Right, but you that's I mean? part of the. I mean, it take it, it. It's cliche, but it takes money to make money. You you have to be willing to take risks. If, if you're worried about being scared, you might just stay out. Yeah, but, but with that, and I'm going to be the one that keeps throwing this in there to, to yeah. bring it back to reality. You're educating yourself. You you're are doing the research, way, yeah. and then you made a comment for those. That, again, we saw I saw a spike in, in, in viewers right now on the live side. So, and if you're you're scrubbing through, or you're listening to the audio. You have surrounded yourself, and you make it a great. You made a great point that you surround yourself with people 
that have strengths where your weaknesses might be. Right. Exactly. So you can only educate yourself. Again, going back to that tool belt thing, like even you, Logan, I mean, like, you are a very, very uh, uh, perceptive person. You're very, you know, you know what you're, you're strong at. You know your work ethic is, I mean, you go back to the, your roots again. I mean, I keep bringing that up. I love the fact that, you know, if it was the landscaping, it was the lawn yeah. mowing, it was this. It's hard like, work. You have no problem if, if someone calls off, I imagine. You have not said this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it for you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. If someone calls off, you're going to be on that mower okay. and fucking getting it done. I was on the mower for 10 hours. Yeah, well, I did. Yeah, I saw your by the way. Yeah. I, I saw but, but, but you have no problem, like, moving beyond what we talked about, where someone says, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to, like, I don't want to work for someone else, and right. blah, blah, blah. It's because they're doing that wrong, and again, going back to the capacity thing, but it, it, if you don't, if you have the mentality you don't work for someone else because you don't want to work. You don't want to, if you're lazy, it's going You to know those people. Yeah. I mean, we all, all three yeah. of us know those people, and yeah. everyone out there knows, a, you, it, you might be one of those people out there is that you, you, you say that you want to, I don't want to work for someone else and you saw entrepreneur mentality on the tagline when we're talking about this, man, the, this podcast, that's where it was like, help yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the fact that help yourself by understanding what you're willing to do instead of just being unhappy or, you know, saying things that you see on these, these social media posts. I mean, Jake, you're the one that always talks about this, that you think, you know, it's, it's kind of bullshit. All these like, Oh, you know, like, entrepreneur this, entrepreneur that, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, but educate yourself. If you have right. that, you know, do what Logan did and educate yourself, figure out what you're good at, what you're not good at, and then figure out how to actually find your happy. But that's right. the shit that like those guys aren't talking about. Like, well, they not, don't because not it doesn't this. sell. It doesn't they're sell. They're not doing this. It doesn't sell because well, it's not glamorous. None of it's glamorous. Part of it is they, they, they I will say this, there are still a lot of those Tony Robbins out there, right? And they, Good for what he did, but there's a lot of those those real estate guys I was talking about earlier. It's like, oh, buy a ticket for five hundred dollars to come to my seminar. They will tell you what they did, but those people that are at the dreamer stage, yeah, what do you say? Watch for anyone? Watch for That's I've never heard that. I you like never that. Heard I've that's never a, heard that's the Shark Tank thing. I don't watch Shark Tank. Yeah. That's a Gary Vee thing too. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't know, know where it came from, from, but I, so, I've heard so it the entrepreneur part, like that person, what happens? I think a lot of times they're, they're, it's not a bait thing. They're good at what they do as well, but like Logan can do all that stuff. Fast forward to the point where you're 50, right? You know, you've done all this stuff, and this kept, kept expanding all that stuff, and you want right. to help help people. Help people. So, but you're also gonna keep making money. Oh yeah. Right. Or it's not worth it. So so it's, you're not doing anything wrong by doing like the the basic social media, getting that that you know like these are the principles. Yeah. Do this, this, and this, and people think that's it. Yeah. I, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want I want to have that mentality. I want to be. And, and we were talking about Jake is that even if you like, I want to be the best janitor. If that's all your tool belt can can handle. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with being the best Absolutely janitor. Absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with janitorial services. I'm not saying that, but it was like one of those things that it's, just, yeah, it's what mean, people it's say, right? Be the best janitor, business. but be like just like being the best salesperson, you don't have to yeah. necessarily be the best business owner or sales manager. Right. You also, if you're the best janitor, it doesn't mean that you have to start your own janitorial service business right. because you're no longer a janitor unless that person calls off and you're on the mower. Right, exactly. So, you know what I'm saying? So I, I got my second question. Remember, I had two questions. Yes. <laughs> so that was like 30 minutes ago. But so we're coming up on two hours. But here, here, here's my second question: Is that if you, Logan Manning, being 27 years old, like where you are now, surpassing the aspirations that you had three, four years ago, and, I can't and then you even, and then you have, like I'm, I'm and then you have more, bigger ones. Oh, right? it never stops. Yeah. Um, what would you say to yourself when you were 22 where it seemed like all the negativity was piling on where you just there was I would assume that there wasn't much motivation there but you still had a fire in your right. belly but you just felt like so bogged down that you couldn't do anything couldn't and, think and, and you couldn't even think about what to do you just knew that you wanted to do something that you're passionate about right and you didn't know where that was or how to go about doing that. So right. what would you say to yourself five years ago <laughs> um, to help yourself? That's a great question. Yeah, that's, I mean, I guess that's, I that's great. Problem, but that is a great question, though. And maybe within this question, you'll find more answers that you didn't even know. Right. Go back and listen to this and then write it down. Yeah. <laughs> For your own and memoir. And we'll talk about it over tequila. Um, you know, the, uh, <laughs> I guess, um, 
I guess rem- uh, I would tell myself to remember this is all part of your story. It's not the end of the story, even though it sucks right now. It's 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 preparing you for better things. If you put out more good, I mean, more good's gonna come back to you. Yeah. Um, do you mind speaking of just sure, for sure, there's all, audience? Or? There's all kinds of different things that that you know I would tell myself, but this is knowing my state of mind. So I, I hope it would translate to somebody else who might be in the same position. Yeah. Um, or a similar position, but it's uh. It's, I guess it's embracing the fact that it is, it is part of the story. It's not the end of the story. So learn what you can from it. Yeah. Because both negative and positive lessons are still lessons that you can apply to your life. I love it. Even when you're in the most positive place, those negative lessons that you learn might help you do better for somebody else, do better for yourself even. Um, I think that would be the biggest thing is just, you know, you know, keep your head up, and and again, I know we've said it a hundred times, but just find what that is to, for your personal success, what it is to be happy and to yeah. be, that doesn't mean be, be satisfied, because there's two totally different things. You can be completely happy, but not satisfied, always wanting always wanting more while being completely content with where you are, I think is what, you know, Absolutely. Ed Milo says all the time. Um, but anyway, that's a very real thing, but I, I guess I'd be the, and I, I want to think about that. I am going to I am gonna listen yeah. to this podcast, and I'm going to think about that, like, what I would say, what I would say to myself five years ago, but I would, I would also tell myself like, you're gonna have three great kids and you're gonna meet the girl of your dreams, because that'd make me super happy. But yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not things that you can. It's e- it's easier to see it when you've already been through it. Exactly. Um, well, psychology there, and I'm I'm, I, I, I'm just saying like it's interesting, and this is where people move on from. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we had a, a podcast recently, moving forward versus just moving on. Right. And, and I think you took that step one, which is moving on, and then and then you took the step two, which is moving forward. Oh, you have to, yeah. But. You can't dwell on it. This is a good point that I think, I, I think it is very valid. When when you, Logan, even even all the like, confidence you have talking about your story and, and, and talking about the lessons you've learned and all that stuff, I, I think the difficulty of your question, Jake, to him is, is, is the point that you, you tug on the heartstrings of, of Logan because he's talking to himself when he was deeply depressed, yeah, yeah. deeply struggled, and, and I'm not saying you're going back to that place, but you don't even know how to talk to that person. Like that person totally is, different is, is mind frame. yeah. So like I, I mean, you got quieter. And and joke on you, you're talking to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm dead serious. So that's, that's what you're why mean. I'm not I, mean that. I know, but I am. Right. I frame that question because you're talking to me. Okay. Because that's where I. Well, I'm at where you were say, 22, and, and, and I'm 24. Well, then I would I would say I would say this then is uh, definitely don't don't put a a uh, don't don't think you're ever going to get your happiness from from a material thing first off. Yeah. Um, but it's very important to find that whether that it doesn't matter what it is. At the end of the day, if you if you wake up and and you're just happy to see what the day holds, even if you know it's going to be the same thing, but you're enjoying it. Yeah. I mean that's. And that's that's everything. Um, surround yourself with good people who level you up. If somebody drives you down, it might really suck to cut them off, but cut them the fuck off. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, there's I've lost so many acquaintances and relationships because it's it's negativity. Yeah, and I mean it'll breed negativity in your life. Um, surround yourself with, with just good, solid people who. Even if you screw up, are going to support you. Yeah. Um, go, this I think this is a great segue into the the incredible curve in life is is you know when I I realized I was being taken advantage of at that company because you know this guy I, I built a large company we're gonna I was talking to him about that seven figure mark and this is when he starts tightening his grip yeah. big time because he wants he was he realizes, paying you the ten ninety nine which is. Yeah, garbage. It was garbage. That's and, garbage. And also the no the benefits. rate the rate of sales that I was making based on what I was receiving was, I mean I was happy so I wasn't going to complain about it. Right. But it was definitely not fair compensation. And so, I, I did the same. I'm I'm bad about just walking out. I did the same thing to him. Um, I I told him I said it's not a bad thing if you know what you want and you're ready for it. Y- yeah, and I and I wasn't even sure I was ready for it, but I knew I was educated and I knew what I needed. Do. I'm going to say the same question. Did you have kids at that point? Oh, yeah. You had two at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So that falls and, into and, Steve's and, I mean, thing and with, where... And, well, three, at, at, with, with Roman and I, I mean, me and, me and Bethany and started... You were together, that's right. When yeah. you were at that company, Absolutely. that's when you guys met. Yeah. That's and, right, and I remember so, that now. Um, so I had a whole lot. I mean, to, you know, uh, Bethany was paying for childcare, and she was stuck in a nine-to-five job, too, and had the same exact slew of emotions and knew she wanted to just do something. So we you guys are kindred spirits. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. I mean, it's, yeah. but but we. I want to meet her. I think I met her at the shop. I think you met her once. She doesn't like to go in there because it makes your hair smell funny. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> I think Alicia and Liz say the same thing, like our girlfriend. Liz, <laughs> yeah, they put the hair. Liz don't, don't care. It's a legitimate thing. She'll smell like a John cigar afterwards. Liz care, or I'm sorry, Alicia care. The Liz thinks I smell good at night. I'm like, you're you out of your goddamn mind. I love not been dating long enough. Yeah. On my on my clothes too. But anyway, uh, basically, I, I, this one I didn't really want to burn the bridge because he, I had learned so much. So, um, are we good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I, I had learned so much, not because of him, but because of the company I had built and stuff. Uh, anyway, I didn't want to burn the bridge, so I was in the middle of a project. I finished that project, and I had already started trying to like purchase stuff and like prepare for that next step so that's something you have to realize too is like i had made sure that i wasn't going to just like leave my family out to dry yeah um me and bethany decided a little bit of a different responsibility yeah, yeah you yeah, were a chase to, you don't be afraid to jump off the cliff but you have to be pretty sure that you're going to learn how to fly on the way down you did that during that that good experience that turned bad right Right, you learned a lot about. I learned, learned the a lot. operations manager. Yes, yes. that position, it, it's like that that blessing of a curse. It, it was. Right? That was your catalyst. Well, it yeah, was. that's what I'm saying. I because once I did that and once I had built this company, I'm like, I, I know I can do this now yeah. because I've done it with no risk on me. So now I'm ready to do it. That literally can be a lesson for people. Also, is not not just the end result, but the fact yeah. that you can look for these opportunities where it's like that is your shot to be able to to grow a business like you yeah. did. And it's tough to see it ahead of time, you know what I mean? But you saw it as did you were in the middle of it. you have to foresight or-, or uh, I know, I know. Um, that's, that's a huge part of it is, is and that's why you need to, you need to have decide where you're trying to go. Because then that foresight is always in the back of your head and you start picking up on things. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I literally, it was a conversation like this. I, I said, I said, babe, I'm, I'm not happy you know all the things that are going on she was fed up with it too and i said i know that you just want to do something bigger with your life too and i was like let's invest every, everything we have <laughs> yeah, and let's quit our jobs and she said okay just and like that that was it like that was it. one statement that was and it. follow up it was literally that succinct it's amazing well, it, doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't question why two years later you guys are getting married yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um it was that succinct and um she quit i mean can combine we were making about eighty thousand dollars a year we both quit our jobs yeah on the spot and we jumped we invested every penny that we had in the equipment and i um again i wanted to make sure that i i was doing things the right way the company that I left, even though I didn't have a non-compete, I didn't take a single client. Um, Do you still not have those clients? I have some of them now, <laughs> but yeah. he sued me, so I went back for blood. But because um, you weren't in the wrong, I wasn't in the wrong. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah, law, yeah. I mean, he lost. Yeah, the absolutely. Proved that. But anyway, I didn't take any clients. I wanted to make sure that we were doing things the right way. I didn't take any clients. I didn't take anything with me. We just fl- fl- like jump because we knew that on the way down we we're gonna. We had three kids to take care of, and we 100% supported each other. We invested every single dime that we had. And were you saving at the time? I I I had a little bit, and I had been buying things as I could so I think because 50%. I saw I saw this was coming. I think okay. 50% of that is the the faith in each other. It was huge. The it belief huge in each part. other, is and that doesn't have to be a spouse or a girlfriend. It can be somebody who who just supports you. Yeah. And, so, and, and I, I, like, what was the turnaround time? We don't have like a ton of time to get in that, but what was the turnaround time from you both quitting your jobs to starting the first business? If we didn't have enough money to pay our bills, we would have not paid our bills in two months. Okay. So you did struggle for a moment. Well, we had enough money set aside. Okay. So, no, I mean, our, our kids never knew everything was taken care of. Which is which is but not always months, the case. Not in two months, we were paying our bills. Yeah, with the, with the clients that I brought on. That's great. And I had found I had so you found came, you hit the ground running. 
full speed. It yeah. was ridiculous. Um, I had found a, I had found a, a, that I had a niche for sales, and so as soon as I knew what was what was going on, I started just, I mean, everything I saw. I had some of the crappiest properties you would ever see in your life, but they were paying me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we did. We started paying our bills. <laughs> And we started making how much we had made at our old jobs, and we started making more than we made at our old jobs, and we started having A-list clients. Good for you. And then, um, and I'm trying to sum all this up, you know. So. Well, don't yeah, you're not a speaker. I mean. Yeah, but but basically, the next step was um, a contact that I had made. He's a very he's a very wealthy man. Saw what we were doing quietly, mm -hmm. just was watching. And was he a client? Um, he was a previous client. Okay. And he networking to Jake's point yeah, earlier. Exactly. Um, he approached me and he said, um, I see what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I'm in a bad position. He owns commercial properties all over the city. He said There's I, a big contract right there. It's the whale. Well, that's he, he became an investor. Yeah. Um, wow. he said he said I want to um, he says I, I have a problem and I mean Building a business is about being able to solve a problem. He says, I have a problem of paying six different vendors and I hate what they're doing. He says, you have what I want. And he said, I know your problem is you need, because you're scaling equipment. Yeah. And you know, trucks and stuff, capital. Wow. And because uh, we burnt through all of our, our cash, um, we did some traveling and stuff like that. We saved and you know paid my brother and another person who was working for us. You know we were still obviously taking care of our responsibilities, but right. that burnt through everything. And we were also we were trying to with fi this finding our happy. We were tr we traveled a lot that first year, and a lot of people would say that's a bad move. But the point is, the reason we did this in the first place is because we weren't happy. Yeah. So we decided we're going to spend some of our hard earned money on experience so that we can I like that. For, for us that that was what drove us to the next level because we realized like we can give what we want out of this if we keep working harder were, were, would you say you were reckless with that absolutely not yeah okay no. so there was Very there's a little bit Very of principal. like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it was, was a mathematic thing too. it was yeah, yeah. yeah okay. but a lot of people would be like you shouldn't have invested that back into the company but the thing is we were investing that back into ourselves and we are the company Again, dialing it back down from you know saying that, that man, I, I quit my job, she quit her job, we're doing all this, and then we just decided to travel for a year. It's like you're in, in between you did it, you our did travel. Mathematically, you, you, yeah. you try to figure out like we're not going to blow all of our savings on traveling yeah. for a year. But between our traveling, out. we're working eighty to one hundred hour weeks. Right, and that, those are the, those are the points. To, that's the stuff I, I love that's what the stuff Jake always says about the entrepreneur side of it, like these these posts and all that yeah. stuff. Is like that's what people talk about, like. You know, they like, oh, I quit my job. Everyone said not to do it. We did it. Yeah. It's like, but you did it with all these other factors involved. Exactly. Yeah. You can't. You can't just skim over. And that. that's not but the stuff you see on Instagram because that's not glamorous. Us, us working, you know, clearing out fields from seven a.m. till it turns dark for a week straight to pay for our trip to the Bahamas. That's not glamorous. Yeah, you post pictures of the Bahamas. But I post pictures of the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm yeah, not gonna exactly. post a picture of, of you know bloody hands and, and sweat yeah. and do both man do both yeah, yeah why not and, and you and see use that the same more, you see uh, that filter more. That you use. yeah you see that more <laughs> in my in my story now where like you yeah. you see the day to day oh, I love it's it it's just a grind but I wish I could afford you for this house yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> he did very good work he'd take two swipes and yeah, be done yeah, yeah, I don't need commercial I don't need commercial yeah. but um let's talk about the landscape did, did, did this guy did the whale like sponsor basically pay for your trucks and like the expansion Point to a point is that I mean, he got us off the ground and then the, the actual um, the actual cash flow that came with it because we grew that's a blessing we did man. I did the that's same exact thing I had done as an operations manager to my own company and we grew by eight hundred percent oh yeah yeah and and part of that is is I will say this real quick operations manager that when you when you look at things a lot of times the operations side of it is not the sales is that what you did a two minute truck I I. I did a lot of different things. I was an operations manager. That's what I was my, the point I'm, I'm making here is that in a business like that, when I was an operations manager, it was the operations side. Right. Yeah. There's also a sales and marketing department. Right. But we were you all, were everything. We're all so that. so that title. You know, all so that. titles are, are tricky, right? You know, like when you were the operations manager, I remember that having those conversations that you were actually doing. Like you said, you found out you're good at sales. Yeah. As an operations manager. 
that's how you grew the business. You were also setting up contracts. You were also networking. You're also right. doing all these things. And, and yeah, so to your point, Jake, is when I was at, at, at Two Men in a Truck, it was, I was in the operations department for several years. And then, you know, I was operations manager. I was fleet manager before that. I was also the claims manager, so I learned the customer service side of it. And then I was a branch manager, which was kind of all these things combined. And then I was a sales and marketing manager so for three years. you built your war chest. You are so it's like, yeah, I was yeah. able to do that. And yeah. that, when he was the operation manager, it was small enough based on what it started as. Yeah. And then he had the And then he just, early. his operation manager position, to, to, to Logan's point, is that he was running the business, all the hats. He was a jack of all, all trades. Hats. Yeah, that was it. He didn't have a sales manager. He didn't have someone. Like, it was and we're all still hands. that way. I mean, it's a huge opportunity. But we won't, it's, be, it's we won't be past that until we hit the $2 million mark. Um, then I'll hire, hire an actual ops manager, and I'll focus on customer service and sales because I, I, I really love doing that. Once you scale up that large, I mean, that's how it works. I mean, you need you need a, an admin assistant. You need, yeah. a, you need an office <laughs> manager. You need an ops right. manager. You need a sales manager. And maybe at some point, you will need a marketing manager and an HR right. manager. Like yeah. these are those but positions that, that like that, you're that you're right having now built. Is, I know. Yeah, she's doing the billing. She's. I mean, we on the way here. I was on the phone with her and an employee because for some reason our payroll company paid straight time instead of time and a half for his overtime. Yeah. She's handling that. You know, it's all these things. I'm 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 not just. Uh, coordinating the jobs, but I'm picking up the materials to make sure that when the crews get there, yeah. I'm dropping those off. Yeah, and stuff like that. Well, that was the whole thing. Like two minutes ago, we actually did our own payroll in house because we paid people like several different pay yeah. rates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to pay someone to do that, we saved a lot of money a year to do it internally. Right. And then we had a bookkeeper that then we just forwarded all to them once we did all the work and the 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 actual cost was yeah. minimized. Yeah. I, Bethany was doing sales tax yesterday. There you have it. I mean, yeah. so you so have you guys all are, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Oh man, it's so impressive. It's so impressive. So like get, getting towards like the end of our conversation here, unfortunately. Um, That's why we're having it back. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. That'll be fun. And, and uh, I'll kind of start off the closing remarks. Is that, that cool? And then Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And Steve, but uh, so like kind of summarizing basically, like it's it's amazing what you've accomplished right and, and i love that how you answered the question of you know it, it, if you could have talked to yourself like yeah. five years ago and again I want to like you would have that. never known yeah. where you would have been and we we're kind of amazed where you are but you've always kept your head and nose to the grindstone oh yeah and and work towards it even if you didn't see the light so i don't know i i can appreciate that more than than most, I think, because that's that's my mentality, sure. and and I think I don't know if it's a younger mentality or what, but that that's that's the way I feel, and 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 to clarify completely, it you were speaking to me. That's why I asked that question because and, and there's a lot of things that, I love that like you gave me to think about personally. So like not just help yourself, like you help someone at night and probably countless others, but. I try to drive a point home here that you can do something if you don't see the light. Or if you do oh, see absolutely. the light, then you don't have to know every fucking aspect to that point. Right. And I, I think that's so important as long as like you work hard towards it. So for you to be sitting here like you know, like an actual person saying that you've done this, like you fucking answered everything and you're basically a a uh, like a, a proponent to what I've been saying, so and, and I appreciate that. But more, most and foremost, that like this has been an amazing po like podcast. I've learned a lot. I think a lot of people have learned more than that they knew before they got on the podcast. So and, and, and not and knowing I'm, you, I'm, I'm seriously humbled that that you would say that because to me it's just like it's something that I knew I had to do, and and to think that as a only 27 years old like I can I can help somebody else like that just that blows my mind first off yeah. because all I'm thinking is like I'm just going out and I'm chasing my dreams but the uh, the neat thing is when you can take the tools that allowed you to chase your own dreams start helping other people with them and that's what it boils down to and I've said this before is just is helping other people and that's you know um, helping yourself 
first off. Make sure your yeah. family's set up. Make for sure that you're happy. And but then when you can take it to the next step and start inspiring people and helping people and, and just you know if somebody has a simple question like how do I do sales taxes I've done that before I'll show you how that's 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 man that's real happiness but I right think a, I think a real important point to that you need to understand is that even if you're in a place where you don't want to be you're still influencing someone absolutely so like that's like me, it's like Steve, it's like who anybody comes on this podcast. Right. You're influencing thousands of people. But there's there's, there's people who so, might be like, well, man, I wish I was like Jake and Steve, they have a, they have a podcast. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, you're trying to sort your shit out. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's always somebody look, looking up, you know, like that, that's, yeah. it, well, it's it, it, it part of the perception. And, glass. Yeah, no, well, and, and I'll, that, that, that Light it, light it up, yeah. No, so so to end my closing remarks, I'll just say that this this has been amazing for me and I'm I'm sure like countless others, but I I think it's important and I think it's like I don't know, I just appreciate the fact that like you're just a proponent to what I've been saying for so long. I've never had an example on the podcast. Sure. And I've never been to it I've never been able to explain it the way that like you've explained it. But you've I feel like we're a lot alike, and I don't really, I didn't, I didn't know you, really until tonight. Right. So yeah. we've said howdy, shook hands. On cheers to that. It's the most cheers practical that. example you've had. Yeah. If that makes sense. Because it's not, Logan it's brought up like brand and stuff. Like yeah. there's been yeah. a lot that like have, have have spoken to everyone. I mean, this it's interesting how people relate to each other. Right. It, you know, it takes that that. He's that, literally done what I've been trying to say for like seventy three episodes. And, and and more importantly, he's done what you want to do, right? Not trying. To not exactly what I want to do, but but, but that, that same those principles. Yeah. Those yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. It's very again, very powerful. I like that. Yeah, I love it. Do you, do you have anything that you'd like to don't say? Don't leave anyone. Person? Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, I I uh, I'm super humbled. I'm appreciative. I hope um, just some of my experiences, and I know we only scratched the surface, but um, I hope some of my experiences help somebody who's maybe feel stuck um, at the end of the day if you're trying to if you're trying to to find your satisfaction in material things you're never going to be happy yeah and surround yourself with good people um, I've got incredible friends I've got incredible mentors and I've got an absolutely incredible mate who helps me with everything too and that's, Sounds that's like everything yeah so and congratulations on the engagement thank you I appreciate that yeah um, I mean, I, I don't have anything else to say about that other than just Dustin like, uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to add, Steve? Yeah, I, I think you know to, to in, in close your remarks with with this. Uh, I also really enjoy the podcast, and this is a time where I want to say that I want to thank the sponsors again. I mean, we're coming to a point, and, and, and we we've, we've talked about, we've alluded to it, where that Jake and I have been working on trying to. Um, get into so so our, our initial sponsorships once we we grew this to a point that we had some interest right with with right. Altus USA and Paul Waller and, and Josh Bentley and then also Tinderbox Beast and Brian has been gracious enough like again he's a great guy uh, yeah absolutely absolutely great guy the Montes that we're smoking right now and, and Jake's already put con from that yeah uh, he's on the <laughs> BS alright so I'll start the with the BSCR no that, I spent yeah. a lot you sh- <laughs> You've been talking the whole podcast. Like, this has been a straight which interview. Want, which yeah, it's great. So you're just going to BS Gold, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so BS Gold going away. We talked about that. You know, it's, Damn it's it. For, for now. For now. Uh, we're, 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 I have faith in, in Brian and myself to, to come up with what, we, what we're going to be happy with. That'll, that'll make all you guys happy. BS Cigar Company, the, the silvers are back in. I got a Rubito in here that I'm excited. That's what I'm going to smoke next. Um, but thank you to BS Cigar Company. Also, all to this, like I said, we're getting to that, that point where we're going to actually be uh, looking to expand the, the sponsorships, <laughs> and that's all because of, of you guys on, on Facebook Live, um, especially, and then also the, the podcast uh, listeners, you know, like all the, the audio ones, like you say, Spotify, right. uh, iTunes, all that stuff. We try to get out there. I, I try to do iHeartRadio, which we talked about. Uh, I don't know if that's hit yet or not. I've not gotten an email back from them, but I tried to post last week's, and then also YouTube. So there's might have to finagle the Pandora and iHeartRadio. There's op- yeah, there's opportunity out there, and then YouTube. I just saw an announcement today that YouTube is is taking away monetizing things for um, uh, cigar podcast or cigar content. So whatever it is, but it's, we're doing that. So Tinderbox of Easton, thank you, Brian Joyce, and and Tinderbox of Easton for supplying the uh, the first cigar, the Fuente. 
um, Magar. We've got a few sizes, 15% off. If you mention Bourbon MBS Podcast, we do ship if you guys want to do that. This is an opportunity to do that. Uh, and then also uh, Altus USA for the Monty uh, by Mont- Monte Cristo. Uh, stay tuned. I just met with Josh. Brian and I met with Josh Bentley, who's been on the podcast. A lot of exciting stuff. They're all flying out to Vegas this le- this next weekend, right? Nice. nice. And there is a lot of exciting stuff coming out of all of their brands. Behind us, Romeo Julieta, Monte Cristo, H. Upman. H. Upman is, <laughs> is throwing out a ton of stuff. They actually have a new one that we're excited to smoke after the trade show since we're not going. It's a Trinidad that is supposed to be fantastic. Mm. H. Upman's um, one of my favorites. H. Upman's got a new one, a couple new ones. There's a couple like, uh, they're, they're all anniversary stuff. And we're going, uh, H. Upman? I think it is 175th year or something like that. Wow. We're going to 1800s. Uh, so there's a lot of t- the, uh, tribute blends going out there. So thank you to all the sponsors for doing that. I, I want to say, just in my close remarks, I'll try to be brief and, and uh, we'll go back to the format where I'm last, which I hate, but uh, I, I also enjoy it. We're talking about helping yourself. Jake and I started this podcast because we want to do something with this and that's where we're at. So. Um, I enjoy both the uh, the George Dickel eight number eight and the number twelve. Yeah, I think Logan liked the number eight more. I did because it's lighter, it's a little yeah, easier. Jake needs a little bit more more girth to it, and a little more depth. Girthy. I just like a deep flavor, man. The twelve is there. Yeah, the twelve is right there. I appreciate both for the for the different different reasons. You know what I mean? Like I within, know. Well, especially when this what we're talking about is within two dollars on the shelf in Ohio. Yeah. That's tough, you know what I mean? Whatever you feel like, you know, and especially yeah. if you're mixing cocktails, I don't feel bad about mixing a, a $20 or less bottle of bourbon. Um, <laughs> I've done it with a $125 bottle of rye, so. Yeah, I know, yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. These are the things. Help yourself buy, and I, I've been trying to, to keep up with Logan because there's a lot of knowledge there, and, and I love a lot of the stuff I've heard tonight from both Logan and also Jake, and, and the conversation has been wonderful. I hope you guys have appreciated it. But help yourself <laughs> by a couple things. Knowing yourself, recognizing your own tool belt, right? right? Um, knowing what your hunger level is and why. If, you're just have, if you have aspirations, just have aspirations. And when it comes down to what Logan did, and this is the depth that we've taken it, is that it's not about just the fact you don't want to work for Chase. You don't want to work for someone else. Right. You're pissed off, yada, yada. I don't want to make someone else rich. If that's where the, the hunger ends, that's not hunger. That's You're just being pissed miserable. off. You're just miserable. <laughs> yeah, just, just figure your stuff out and then you, you, you can do it, right? I mean, that's just that's the way it works. But if you believe in it and you do what Logan did, you, you do a couple things. You, you, you look for your happy. You find your happy. And I love that. Um, and you also surround yourself with people that support you. Right. And sometimes when you're doing the right thing, and I know I'm summarizing this, but this is what I've learned tonight. And I, I mean, it's, I mean, for me, it's a very powerful podcast. It's a very powerful episode that I've, I've learned a lot. I mean, just like Jake said, I mean, appreciate you, Logan, for being on. But you surround yourself. I've done some of that, and I've, I've experienced that, both doing the right thing and what you thought was right. Right. And, and sometimes that can get convoluted because you are just doing that. Now your focus is just doing that, and you're not allowing yourself to be happy. Exactly. So there, there's that aspect we didn't talk about a whole lot. But finding your happy and knowing your own tool belt, um, feed your hunger level. Right. You know, it's one of those things that figure out what your hunger hunger level is and, and why it's there. Are you unhappy or do you actually want to do something else or do more? Right. That's the difference. And with that, if I may, the, Go capacity, ahead. the capacity thing. Well, that's the tool I thought belt. that was huge. That's yeah, the tool yeah. belt thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, helping others. That's, that's one of the things I like. Sometimes when you, you feel like you're stranded or you, you feel like all you're doing is trying to help yourself, you also lose that passion or, or if you have that of helping others because you can't even help yourself. Right. You have that mentality sometimes so it, that you're, you're, you're either happy and you're, you're successful with happiness and also financial happiness and you, you realize that you haven't been helping others Right. because there was a time in your life where you, you, know, you see that, that person you know, looking for donations you're like, I can't give you 10 bucks because I... I can't afford 10 bucks. Right. You know what I mean? So helping others and doing that, business or, or, or relationship, whatever it is, you can help other people by, by making their priorities a part of yours. Not putting other priorities first, but making them a part of yours. And I, I got that tonight. And, and the last thing is, and, and my biggest part of this, because again, everyone listening tonight doesn't necessarily have to be 
someone that is going to start three businesses, get right, in the real estate yeah. market, be Logan. For all the reasons we just talked about, I think it's very admirable. I think it's very, very, um, I have nothing but respect for it, but allow yourself to be happy. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Yeah. And then all those other things, the hunger level, the, the aspirations, all that stuff. But the first and foremost is allow yourself to be happy. And I think that's something that, that sometimes will, is lost in translation when all you do is follow these entrepreneurs or these, these millionaire people that are the, the experienced people that, you know, and then the, you, you build in the, the, the uh, personality styles. Yeah. You know, you see like people on vacation, you're like, I want to be on vacation. I want to be in the. But you'll the, still be empty on yeah, vacation. Yeah. yeah. Your surroundings. That's great. Surroundings and then when you come back home, home, you're back to being miserable. Yeah. That's not a short, it's not a short term goal. It's something that's going to fulfill you. As, as something that is accompanying your your everyday life, you know, I mean, this is a goal thing. So um, I really think that uh, everyone listening to this and anyone that follows us, and then and also uh, you know, Logan, thanks to, to your your content here, the the content that we're putting out here tonight is exactly what we want to do. Tonight we had a, a, a great bourbon or a Tennessee whiskey review. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> It's called bourbon BS, it's but like I said, we're gonna stretch it because as hey. we go into this, like the next time Logan's on, there's gonna be no bourbon, no whiskey. You're not. It's all tequila. You're not that yeah. wrong because technically it's a bourbon. Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than yeah, the Kentucky part is yeah. not there, but everything yeah. else is there. Okay. But uh, you know, doing better, given the material and helping yourself is what the the message was tonight. And I think I, I know I learned a lot, and I hope you know. In the conversation, Jake, Logan, you learned a lot. Absolutely. Everyone out there listening, I hope you guys learned a lot. So I, I appreciate you guys being in the garage with us and, and being a part of the community and, uh, and, and joining us. Yes. Have Absolutely. Good night. Thank you, Logan. And uh, I'm Jake Sanders along with Steve Crane. And we make up the Bourbon and BS podcast. Episode 73. Listen to it on all of your podcast platforms. And we appreciate it. And have a great evening. Cheers. Cheers. Empty glass.